Woo, 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 woo. It's MG the future. You know what I'm about. Today is May 8th. May the 8th be with you. Nah, that's not how that goes. 2022. It's almost the noon on a Sunday. Thank God we're still alive because it seems like everybody isn't. Today's video is about something. Divine masculine this, divine feminine that. Kevin Samuels this. Moon and Virgo that. We'll free solid once the chat gets here. So give me a second to play my startup music, share my links, and I'll be back with you in a moment. Send you the future. You know what I'm about. Friends to lose, I ain't got no best to cruise. I just got some shit to move. And by the time I do, they gone. Act like they was with it all along and rap for you. Hope you hate to suck a dick and die fucking too. New, new city, new view. What it be like? Fuck like a hooker, ain't a hooker if it's free, right? We've been going at it, going at it for like three nights. What's good, Marky Facts? This we gon' make it feel right. Puff, puff, pass. Let me light it up. Pop, pop, and been at the bend Screaming free, my niggas Made a scene and I'm just trying to chill out Main, main chick tripping Like what you doing still out So that ace to the face Took my hoe to the mercy And got straight to the chase If wifey call on my curb Shorty fall on my heart I catch bodies, no feelings She drinking the pain away Smoke this for the healing Oh, no. Woo! That's that song get the adrenaline flowing, man. If you if you jog in the morning or if you jog at night and you playing that. Matter of fact, this whole album sometimes. If you could find all the tracks that match that vibe, you'd be in good business. But anyway, I'm MG the Future and I approve this message. How's everyone doing this lovely May? This is the coldest North Carolina has ever been in May. And I'm not about to start complaining. But I woke up at 54 degrees in May in North Carolina. I was like, mm -hmm. it must be the end of the world or something. Picture us going through the rapture right now. Picture they know Jesus snapping his fingers right now and all the cool kids are going first. And we got to be stuck behind with the cleanup shit. Come on now. What type of bullshit is going on in this universe? I really didn't want to talk too much. I have a tendency of talking and things happening. So I've been trying to like wield that responsibility to get my new car. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got time to be predicting shit about everything and everyone else. But this stream I wanted to do so that I could do a stream. I'm not really in the uh, mind state to just make something creatively at this moment because I have a few projects I'm working on. Um, shout, out every, shout out to everybody that supported the last drop too. In case you live under a rock and don't follow me on social media much, which I understand because social media is a fucking disaster. I dropped two new packs. Um, Crate Chop Volume 2 is out. Go ahead and cop that. Fly samples pre-cut for you. I know a lot of people watch my streams and they see me just drag and drop loops into Beats or into Serato and just go through real quick. Well, these folders are just like that, except for I curated them rather than some random persona from 20 years ago now. Yeah, a lot of those chop folders I have are old. So here go some new chop folders if you're into that type of thing. 
Um, I think there's a discount code for my entire website. It's called NPC Food. Just enter that in at checkout and it'll give you a discount. Should be pretty noticeable. Same thing with MC, MPC Book Volume 2. Shout out to the brother Pedro who helps me with these. Um, go ahead and cop these. This is a Chord Book Volume 7 and Guitar Book, aka Chord Book Volume 6 for the MPC. If you're still in a standalone game, hashtag salute to you guys. And appreciate everyone that supported. Plus, I got some other recent stuff up top in case you haven't been around for a while. Now that that's out the way, I want to start with a scripture, yo. I know today's not the Sabbath. I enjoyed my Sabbath yesterday. I didn't do no streams. I try not to let any fuckery afoot, uh, you know, corrupt my constitution, if you will. And I just really relaxed and I had a chance to think about things. And um, that Kevin Samuels death, not even his death. His, his death does bother me. And I want to tell you why. It's not because I was a supporter. I don't even think I watched the whole... Kevin Samuel's stream, but his death bothered me. More so because of the narrative that surrounded him. And then the fringe side effect, which I didn't expect, was how people would talk about him in his death. That's not cool in any school you go to. So I'm trying to figure out, just in the background, what was it about his energy and polarity that made this group of people feel so irate rather than entertained? Rather than whatever, you know, everyone got an opinion. Why was he such a fixated character? But here's the scripture, Ecclesiastic, Ecclesiastes 3. There's a season for everything. To everything, there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones back together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search, and a time to count as lost. A time to keep, and a time to discard. A time to tear, and a time to mend. A time to be silent, and a time to speak. A time to love, and a time to hate. A time for war, and a time for peace. Come on now, who, who, do, who do it better than the, uh, the Old Testament of the Bible? We don't know. We don't know, we don't know, we don't know. So it's a time for everything. And I know a lot of us have been feeling it since the pandemic that there seems to be some type of pole shift that's going on internally in people in terms of uh, a lot of people you know, unironically, are on a different type of time than they may have been pre-pandemic. And we've been waiting for a while now, especially with all the experimentalization going on. Hint, hint, wink, wink. And a lot of people subjecting themselves to that. How would that affect their minds? Since this is the first time publicly we know about mRNA, but we don't know about its long-term side effects. And with those extra codes due to people, when they start attaching on and integrating into a human biology system. I'm not a scientist, a doctor, a chemist, so I can't only speak but so far on these subjects, but... I do know one plus one, or that one MTV boy group says, I know my calculus. So let's check out the chat room real quick. Marky Fast is in the building. Amexum, I see you. Black Soul, K Bengus, Caliber, Shogun, the Super Mods in the building. He'll slice you up now. Roderick's in the building. Antonio McKinney, aka AM the Legend, or Sam the Legend. What's good, man? DJ V Live, hey MG, perfect timing. What's going on, tribe? Special Ops, but with a six. Illinois, what is going on around here? Happy Mother's Day. Yeah, shout out to the mothers out there. And shout out to the brothers who have mothers. And shout out to the brothers who have wives who happen to be mothers. And, ha and shout out to the brothers who have baby mothers that are mothers too. Shout out to all y'all on this day. Jayon in the building. Ashley Gordon. D. Daniels. What up with you? Immersive, I see you. Jayon says, I won't be back in NC until Friday. Right now, it's hot as heck in Dallas. Oh, y'all can keep that hot as heck. AM says, man, new whips on deck. I know that's right. Young and icy, finally able to catch a live. What's good? What's good with you? Bartram, the blue flame. Hey, peace to all. Peace to UMG. Looking to cook on your latest pack. We'll replay later. Thank you, brother. Hey, I appreciate you. Aoki Kondo, I see you. Ashley Gordon said, I copped that Crate Chop volume too. Let them know how you feel about it. Blaze One and Chill, what up with you? Haru on the track, peace. Trade Studio says, yo, MG, they lined up Kevin Samuels. Why do we think he got lined up? I've seen a lot of people thinking there's foul play at work on the Juju side. I don't know how I feel about that. 
Because after potentially dealing with something like that, my damn self, that's not the way it operates. It, it, it doesn't kill you while you're in the middle of getting it in. So then you're going to have to question old girl to see what type of time she was really on. Because there's nothing to stage that as well. He could have been doing nothing with her. And something could have happened to him. But we ain't ready for that discussion, I understand. What if he did nothing at all? Mmm, mmm, novelty. Viewers, what's good, man? 33? Aw, oh, here we go. Master Builder numbers. Christos, what's good with you? MG, thank you, bro, for all the videos and effort. I learned so much. I'm glad to hear it. Antonio says, back to work, doc, doing local. So you say, so you so you still in the truck game, but you're just on the on the local circuit. Now that ain't bad to get you get get you back on the training wheels to keep the the energy flowing again. I know it's like riding a bike. Brown go crazy. Shout to the goddesses. That's right. Damn right. P O T Y. What's good? Peace, peace, peace to you. So are all you guys that are here familiar with who Kevin Samuels is? I know he's a pretty polarizing character on certain timelines, but probably not everybody's right. So we want to start with some of his talking points so you see what type of time he was on. What's going on? What's going on? We're back. Outsized outcomes. And they try to get the sexual marketplace value to operate according to fairness. That's what some a wise man once said. Feminism is just a way for ugly chicks to level the playing field. Wow. What do you want? What do you need? Well, I'm looking for a good man to be a husband to me and to be a father to my children and someone who can support me. And what is he and what is he going to do? What is he going to get from that? What is he going to get from you? Um a beautiful wife. That's a, that, uh hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, beautiful wife. How tall are you? 54. Uh dress size six that's your picture that's my picture how recent is it this man that's a 10 year old picture but i still look like that ah <laughs> uh, beautiful women don't don't have 10 year old pictures ma'am <laughs> 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 he did ass. All right, we'll go ahead and put you on hold until you can get yourself together. <laughs> uh, I mean, I swear to God, it's eight. I'm five foot eight. Yo, <laughs> just do that in your own time. Do the <laughs> do the best of Kevin Samuel's moments, and you see what type of time that brother was in. And he's always been the subject of controversy on Black Twitter, but I thought he was just an entertainer, bro. Yeah, remember, there's four types of people. You got directors, entertainers, thinkers, and feelers. And homeboy right there, that's an entertainer. And a lot of times he's spitting jewels, too. Like, a lot of things he's saying is factual. Especially when he's referring to metrics. Or logic. And I think that may have been his flaw, is that he was applying logistical analysis from the standpoint of a man to an audience that he probably didn't suspect would be predominantly women. And I think that's where the disconnect happens. This is the Tower of Babel phenomenon that we've all been experiencing for the past few years. Probably in your own personal life, you notice that you be talking to people you normally talk to, and for some reason, they don't understand where you're coming from, or you find yourself in a disagreement, but both of you are talking about the same thing, but with different words, but there's a disagreement based on that. It's weird. Where's Tower of Babel Genesis? Let's, let's remind us what happened in the Tower of Babel. It happens a few times. I don't want its construction. I want to know about when the angels walk by it. Don't play with me. Nah, in the Bible, cuz stop playing with me. Here we go. The whole earth had a common language and a common vocabulary. When the people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and they settled there. They then said to one another, Come on, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick instead of stone and tar instead of motor. 
Then they said, come on, let's build ourselves a city and a tower with its tops in the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered across the face of the entire earth. So that's interesting. They're building it. They said they're going to build it. And if we don't build it, we'll be scattered. If we do build it, we'll have clout. Okay. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the people had started building. And the Lord said, if as one people all share in a common language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be beyond them. Come, let's come down and confuse their language so they won't be able to understand each other. So the man's, whoever the Lord is in this particular reference, I know a lot of people default Lord to the Most High God, but that's not the case of the Bible, especially if you go back to its original dialects or languages. There's a whole bunch of different names for God, and they're not all the same God. I don't know why people aren't honest about that. God doesn't have 50 different names. He has one hidden name, and then the name he gave his people. All those other names is something, or dare I say, someone else. But that's another story for another day. So the Lord scattered them from across the face of the entire earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why they named this place Babel, because the, there the Lord confused the language of the entire world, and from the Lord scattered them across the face of the entire earth. If I had to get into my Sumerian's bag, and the Lord had to come down, or he came down from the sky, then this particular Lord is Enlil. Then, if you have Enki, who's the Lord of the ground, if he's telling them how to build, and he's giving them technology, fire, and things like that, because they told you, they're baking the bricks. So this particular civilization already has fire. So Enki, Prometheus, etc. is responsible for that. So on the behest of Enki, they build. On the behest of Enlil, they destroy. So we be riding. So that seems like what is happening now in real time with just regular ass English. Everyone's disagreeing about the fact that they're saying the same thing. And this is very scary. God frequencies in the building. Trey Studio says a nurse has six million ways to kill someone. He fell on top of her and she gave him a shot. Oh, we don't want conspiracy theories on how my man's died. Does everyone know how he died? Because it's, it's particularly weird how he died. He died at seven, 57 years old. He appeared to be in decent health, if not better than decent. I'm looking for who he was with because he didn't die alone. So they're not talking about how he died. They're just talking about his message. They report he was with a 32-year-old nurse before he died. This nurse met him and said that she met Samuels the prior night, came to his apartment, and spent the night with him. She then told police that early in the morning, Samuels began to complain of a chest pain. She attempted to help him, but he fell on top of her, and she proceeded to notify 911. So he's complaining that he was, his chest was hurting, and then he proceeded to have sex with her. And in the midst of having sex, he allegedly has a heart attack and falls on her. That's cap. That's cap. I don't know. I don't know. Can any of you brothers push through chest pain? I don't know. Let me know. Was she sitting on his chest? What's going on? It don't make no damn sense. You don't go from having heart attack symptoms to, uh, this might be minor. Let me continue going. Especially a man of his age. Like, oh no, you know, he's on some Fred Sanford shit. It's time to call somebody, Elizabeth. Like, you can't just... He can't just keep transitioning during this fucking time. Like, what are we talking about? Quan John's in the building. What's good? Ashley Gordon says, yo, my man went straight for the juggler. Yeah, he was no holds a bar. And I think that's why people kept calling, because they always wanted to debate with him and prove him wrong. And then in proving him wrong, they get to see why he's right. And it's that infamous thing where, like, you have all these different perspectives. More than one thing can be true. Because when people talk about what their desires and wants and feelings are, that doesn't necessarily map to the price of something in the grocery store. Like, yeah, you know, I would really like to have some rice and some beans and some chicken for uh, for dinner tonight, but I only have $2. And you walk into the damn grocery store and the shit comes up to $8. And you're like, well, it should be this way because I really want it. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> Why should things be a certain way because we want it? Not in this dominion. Not in this realm. We didn't create the rules, sadly. And we're seemingly breaking free of them. 
So this to me looks like a transitional period. Because one thing Kevin Samuels has in common with some other brothers, like even like um, if you pay attention to the conscious community, you have like brothers like Polite, who's had a problem dealing with some Latino woman. Again, this, uh oh, this might be a deeper and darker link. Both, both your boy Kev Samuels, I think Arson just sent me a picture of Shorty from, from the Kev Samuels situation. Yeah, he did. I can't, I can't, I don't know if y'all can see her. But he had him a younger Latina chick. Same thing happened with Brother Polite, who was like gifted at recalling information as it pertains to uh, the Nawupian paradigm and the Kemetic paradigm. They caught him up in Miami with some Latino woman and her daughter. And then that became a big controversy on certain sectors of YouTube. And Polite's been kind of AFK. Then they got Young Pharaoh, who's been the black woman as God messenger, who does comedic science and has done a little uh, Trump-leaning, right-wing-leaning propaganda analysis. He got caught up with his baby moms and some kind of DV type issues, which is kind of like, you know, caused his credibility to be in question as it pertains to his main theme and message. You got Kevin Samuels, who's trying to, quote unquote, explain the playing field as it comes to dating in a capitalistic society. And he calls a lot of rifts and tensions with black women because of the standards that he presents that I feel like may have not been known to them. And if it is known to them, if they default to it's not fair that it's that way, then we miss the intent of his message. But even still, he's out of here. Any brother that tries to explain the game, oh, the other one, Nature Boy. Nature Boy was the kid that was always with a shirt off, talking in Costa Rica with like a commune of women. And sometimes dudes, pause. But he always had interesting messages. I couldn't follow him, but he ended up getting caught up for similar things. There's always like sex trafficking related. There's always like man versus woman energy. And for some reason, it's happening all at once. It's like that Chinese movie. Everything happening all at once. And can no one explain that to me? Can no one explain that shit to me? The Godfather preaching, Haru. Black Lil Ross, did he die on top of a baddie? That, exactly. Mean Gene says, definitely cap. Quan John says, where it said they had sex? Quan John, I need you to employ your imagination. I, what did this article say, Quan John? You trolling right now? Quan John's got to be trolling. He said, where did it say that they had sex? I'm going to do this one more time because Quan John didn't hear me when I read this article. A 32-year-old miss... A nurse. Have you been on Black Facebook? Did they tell you who the top A, B, C, D, E type of women are and the nurse is always number one? Do you pay attention to these things? Probably not. And I don't blame you. Facebook's a dangerous place. She identified herself and said she met Samuels the prior night to his death. So she stayed the night with him in his apartment. She met him the prior night. So she meets the guy the first night. She stays the night at his house. A stranger, if you will. And you're like, where did it say they have sex? If you don't get your God, you getting got now. <laughs> then they woke up in the morning. I wonder what they were doing in the morning. They weren't eating bacon and eggs. He said, hey, my chest hurts and falls on top of her. Ass naked, not having sex in his bed, in his house with a 32-year-old woman he just met the night before. I got you. I can see how this could be confusing because no one does that. <laughs> Yo, Trey A says that's the nurse. Jay Diggity says she was thick. Yo, if y'all don't respect the people who are traumatized, I know a friend of mine whose father had a heart attack and drove to the hospital by himself. It was a 40 minute drive. I don't think that's part of it is true, but Ophis knows some immortals. Y y your friend's dad's immortal. That's what that's called. Black Laura Ross says, What, what makes y'all think it's cap though? You ain't ever heard someone, something medical, and been like, fuck it, I'm fine? Yeah, everybody. Everybody. I ain't never had chest pains or try to have sex. That's a hit. He died on a one-night stand. Come on now. 
Justin Porter, what's up with you? Jayon says, that's a weird, weird. The POTY says, the psychology babble in first, his first sounds a baby makes, which is the starting point as a linguist. Ooh. Babble is the, sign, the first sounds that baby makes in psychology. Fee says, it's possible to have a heart attack and stick and be able to function. He didn't have sex with her. He just fell on her. Fee said, you could fight through a heart attack. Oh, no, I know you can, but I'm just saying, if he's in the middle of having sex, what are the likelihood that he's, like, 57 years old with a young woman with that, with that royal honey and his heart feeling funny? You think he would just kept going? That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying, like, could it have been something else if it hit him that fast? Black Lord Ross says, nah, MG, my maternal granddad drove through a heart attack and died that way eventually. Oh, he had a heart attack and then died later? What's the difference between the heart attack and when he actually died? K KD says, bitches are witches? Yo, you're funny. So you think she's a witch? Or you think she was sent by witches to stop Kevin Samuels from holding men and women accountable in a post-Web 2.0 society? I don't know if I can get with that. Black Lil Ross says, I see what you're saying too, though, Feast. You're saying that there's a potential that they were just kicking it and that he was having heart problems and he was near her and fell on her. This had nothing to do with being in the act of sex at that moment. That's put, that's true, bro. I wasn't there. But the way they leave those details out is kind of like elusive without being salacious by implying, you know, some type of imagery on her. So she's a survivor, right? You're not going to be like, while well, in the middle of sucking and fucking miss, the nurse says, you know, what I mean, like they can't even write an article like that. You can have a heart attack for hours and it starts off like, there we go. Oh, he said he his heart attack happened. He kept going. He had a car accident. He got taken to the hospital and then he died later. Damn, I'm sorry to hear that, bro. Fee says, I do think there is foul play, though. P.O.T.Y. says he calls it the N-word narrative. For some reason, it works in the mainstream social stream against us, to no offense. When it's normal in our own personal community. When when you say the it is normal, what is the it? What have they normalized to make us uh, not respond to this correctly? Not only did he die, but Jordan Maxwell died. And Google has scrubbed him off the face of the planet. Because if you search for Jordan Maxwell da died, you're not going to find him on Google. And it's very weird. Very fucking weird. And I don't appreciate it. Page 404, you see what I'm saying? This shit's weird. That's a female, though. Am I spelling his name right? Maybe I'm spelling Maxwell wrong. Yeah, they're scrubbing Jordan Maxwell off the internet, bro. I don't like that. Well, let me let me give you another. Yeah. It just strikes me. Let me give you yeah, a yeah. quick example about the, the maritime law, the law of water, the law of the sea. <clears throat> Money is water by law. So when a ship, uh, this is why all ships are female by law. All ships, rocket ship, sailing ship, air ship, it doesn't matter. If it's a ship, it's female. Right. Because the captain always refers to his ship as she. Right. She's a good ship or she's done this. Why she? Because she delivers the product. Right. The Without vessel. she, there is no product, right? It's a vessel. It's a whole of course, thing. It's a of course like, it is like a vessel. So is your body. It's a vessel that produces a product. Right. So when the ship pulls into harbor, uh, it stops and where it parks is called its birth. It's birthing a ship. Uh -huh. Or she sits in her berth. Uh -huh. And every item on that ship, well, coming off that ship is a money. It's money changing hands. Right. It came in on water, so it's called. So every piece has to have what is called a certificate of manifest, uh -huh. because certificate. she is sitting in her birth. That's why when you were born, 
I had a birth certificate. You had you your mother's water broke. Oh. You were in, you were inside a container of water. Her water broke, and you came out, mm -hmm. and therefore you have to have a birth certificate. Wow. There and it's got to be signed by the dock because that's where the ship is sitting. The dock is where the ship that sits. That is funny. So once you begin to see how. The words and terms are all based on maritime admiralty, the law of water, mm -hmm. the cash flow, the liquid asset. Mm -hmm. you, but why, is that just in English, the dock, the water? Yeah, yeah, of I course. Mean, but of course, it goes all the way back to the English or British domination of the seas. Oh. And so when the British began to dominate the seas, the Knights Templar Masonic Order of the Knights Templars, who have been in, in, the, in the middle of uh, Asia, mm -hmm. <clears throat> came back into Western, Eastern Europe, mm -hmm. brought all of these concepts, and it was developed into a commercial system. He's going hard. Anyway, look him up when you get a chance before all his videos are scrubbed off the internet. I think I'm part of one of his subscription sites, thanks to a fellow um, subscriber who really wanted me to catch all the old Jordan Maxwell stuff, and I didn't understand that. But anyway, man's died in March, they said. And it was very unceremonious. And he'd been interviewed by and he's been on tons of shows. And just like, yo, how does someone like that die and no one knows? It's very scary. He's like Taj Street Bay for white people. Like, it's very scary. POTY says, the narrative, the black man, a suspicious woman, they're well-educated, access perfect, the meetups and the honey, this is our community narrative. Oh, I see what you're saying, bro. J Beats and Waves says, what's good, peeps? Happy Mother's Day to all the moms. 10-4. Fee says, am I a bitch for getting in my feelings over the negative responses to this black man's death? Are you a bitch for feeling away? No. Why would you, why'd you, why would you be a bitch for having feelings? I wouldn't say you're a bitch for feeling away. I would say something is misaligned or off if you find yourself defending him all day. Because everyone has an opinion, including him, right? So everyone's entitled to feel how they feel. It's just taboo to us, quote-unquote, black people, to see black people act like this about another black person. Very unusual. It's very quiet when Maxine's in jail. It's very quiet when certain people die. It's very quiet when certain people get caught doing things that are actually harmful to the black community, like overtly. Whereas when black people have opinions and we disagree with them, that's a bigger offense to us because we're still in a kind of like acute and clamorous state, I think. Meaning where we care more about virtual signaling and we care more about the optics and how things look and sound than how they actually are. And it's real fucked up to discredit any person who is a media personality, who's doing entertainment, who he's a fucking life coach. <laughs> like you're not supposed to agree with him if you're coaching your own life anyway. He's for the people who don't have that particular program. And then that program could be edited and modified to suit different needs. Just like the brother Patrice O'Neill, another one. Shout out to Arson who was telling me about the Black Phillip podcast. Like Patrice O'Neill was like probably worse than Kevin Samuels. But you'd be hard pressed to see where he's wrong. So it's all perspective. It's all about the type of people you deal with. Because everyone's not on the same type of time. So for us to get really butthurt about what he said when he was alive or be even more butthurt because he's dead, I don't know, man. That's It's a weird energy. It's like a side effect of something else. I don't think it has anything to do with him, to be quite honest with you. Because remember, just a week prior, they were demonizing Amber Heard. Is that her last name? Johnny Depp and Amber, right? And you've seen all the narratives about how Johnny Depp endured DV from a woman and is recorded and is proven and you get to see the Hollywood version of trauma amongst white people. And so, like, the white male was the victim from the crazy white woman. And everyone had their hot takes on that because he's the Pirates of the Car Caribbean. But don't forget, he was Gilbert Grape first. What's eating Gilbert Grape? Edward Scissor's hands. Y'all weren't outside. Anyway. And then that kind of faded. Then you had the Will Smith defending his wife trope, right? So the, check out how many times the... It's the dichotomy or versus between the male role versus the female role. In the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp case, it's supposed to be his fault. But the media said it was her fault. White guy vindicted. Boom. Um, Chris Rock, Will Smith. This is quote unquote Jada Pinkett Smith's fault. Because her reaction caused her husband to react, overreact, and smack somebody. 
right or wrong. And you see the same black people talking about Kevin Samuels picking sides in that. Then you go to the next case. Something else happened uh, with some famous people's relationship. With Rihanna and ASAP Rocky's relationship with people, right? Where Rihanna has the leverage, the clout, the money. She's the high value woman. And then ASAP Rocky, like, oh, you know, I love that for him. <laughs> then what else we got? We got so many tropes. Like the whole fucking past two and a half weeks, three weeks has been these, these, these tropes. Like readjusting the imagery, especially amongst quote unquote black people. And I hate calling us that because we're not black people. But you know what I mean? Colloquially. The, the, look at the roles of men in all those situations. Will Smith, people say he's a cuck based on the optics. ASAP Rocky, they really don't disparage him, but you know they have him ranked below Rihanna. And you just keep going to these different situations where black men are involved. And it's like a thing. So you have all that stuff coming at once. And then someone like Kevin Samuels, whose message kind of mirrors that back and pushes it in a different direction. Of course you have a Kager bomb. Because everyone else is being honey dicked by Hollywood media and fake relationships. You know what I'm saying? What did what someone say? Someone said this recently. It was an old person. Rick and Morty. It was old ass Rick. What did Rick say? I think Summer said something. She was on her phone or she had a picture. And she was showing a picture of a happy family. And Rick was like. He said something. He said some fly shit about it, too. I'm going to fuck it up because I'm not going to say exactly how I said because, you know, they give him those those one line zingers. But basically he was saying like Summer was on some shit like, yo, don't they look so happy? And Rick looked at it. He was like, well, I can tell when someone's faking it. <laughs> he said basically what he was saying to her was like, they're not happy. They're pretending to be happy. And he said, I could tell when someone's faking it because they're usually smiling in pictures. I was like, whoa, that's the whole social media dilemma where everyone has like a cache of all their vacations and all the trips they took to Dubai or Coney Island and shit. And then they slow leak them over the year. And it gives the impression that they're always lit. When in fact that happened in two and a half days. You see what I'm saying? A lot of people smear. Not smear, but yeah. They create their own version of their portal. Which you should do, by the way. But it's easy for us to get caught up in those illusions. Or those, uh, st those statues we create of ourselves for people to be misled and think this person's like this all the time and they're not no one's like anything all the time life happens way too fast if nothing move you life will shout out to miss blue so nah this shit this shit is real creepy like how they set this whole thing up like this whole fucking summer is going to be like male versus female male versus female and they're like what are they trying to distract you from they're not distracting you they're programming you that's why it's so re it's so re repetitious and if you don't overtly understand or catch these themes as they're happening, you can just think it's another day in the neighborhood. It's not. All these situations, all these clout chasing moments are very uber specific. It's the male dynamic versus the female dynamic every fucking time. Quan John said he came from the Patrice O'Neill school. I know that's right. Shout out to James Radu. George Desiree, I see you, bro. Feast, I see you. Haru says, the one vid where he talks about the root of religion changed everything for me. Yeah, Jordan Maxwell is a beast. They beat Tommy Sato up for telling the truth. You said Tommy S Sadomire got beat up? When did he get beat up? He's on the list behind Jason Warlock? Hold on. He's on my list behind Jason Warlock? Well, I, I'm surprised that you guys even know who Tommy Sotomayor is. That's, that's funny. Because y'all don't remember Tommy Sotomayor, which is probably why I don't watch him. But when I hear about all the controversy he gets himself into, I have to say to myself, we're talking about this guy? I went to the Levine's yesterday, get some pants for me and my niggas. I was gonna steal them, I ain't had no money. Met a girl there. So this is like one of the first viral YouTube videos. Trying on some skirts. Chicken sandwiches and waffle fries. That's Tommy Sotomayor. And y'all watch him, this kid, <laughs> for relationship advice. <laughs> like, or for black community stuff. And I just, I, I, know the, I know the drama club kid who grew up with white boys in high school vibe. Hello, I was there, but I didn't hang out with the white boys. So I get it. I don't know.
I don't know. I don't know. I, I had no, no comment, no opinion on that. But that's that's who you... What, what did Nas say? And these are y'all heroes. Oh, I wish I could play Nas on this stream. I wish I could do it. I wish I could do it. I could do it. I don't have to monetize this. Mm -mm. Come on now. We'll go ahead and do it. We'll go ahead and do it. <laughs> Yo. Nas prophesied this whole moment because, what was that, 2005-ish? I forgot when Street's Disciple came out. It had to be like 2004, 2005, right? He said, I walk the block like whatever God. A message to y'all feds. Hold up. Hold on. We, I'm in a Nas mood. They're going to pull this stream. I'm sorry. Fuck it. Who cares? Live life. Life is uh, apparently way too short. Hate to see it. William Oates says even the Supreme Court is in on it. <laughs> William Oates, you brought me up to my next se uh, segment. So there's two problems in there, right? Y'all know the whole shit about Roe versus Wade leak? So the Supreme Court allegedly leaked some document or some future legislation. And when it comes out, it's them thinking about overturning the ability for women to get abortions affecting mainly states in the Midwest. And then, that's, that, and then that energized the machine further. But it makes sense to why they targeted the black people in the black community first, because allegedly all the abortions are targeting, quote unquote, black women in black communities. So they then have to follow the white feminist narrative by default. By aligning with their bodies and their autonomy, they go, hey, the federal government shouldn't be able to tell me to do with my body. But they don't have the conversation on that level. If you have this conversation on the government level, there's two things. The federal government should have never told anyone what to do with their body. The federal government isn't created to regulate the people. The federal government is created by the people. So if it's doing something against the people's will, what does the Constitution say do? No one wants to have the conversation on that gravity because it seems like we all flunked out and didn't learn that. Cool, whatever. I went to school for no fucking reason. But then they go out of that and go, my body, my choice, which is interesting because that's going to piggyback on the next arm of the quote-unquote distraction, which was the Pfizer dump, right? Where Pfizer is disclosing the efficacy of their vaccine, the side effects, things like that. Some people are paying attention. Some people are calling cap. But most of the people are lost in this new my body, my choice paradigm where it was like, is my body my choice when it comes to another life because my choice affects another life, potentially? But it's not my body, my choice, or your body, your choice when your, your refusal to get a vaccine affects my life. So you create this ill-ass law of polarity, law of rhythm, like all the laws are triggered by this bullshit. How do you draw that? How do, what, what kind of punt square can I draw to explain this? How the fuck do you even draw that? I don't know what kind of graph you would do for that. I know it's just a four-shaped square. I know, like, down one side, you're going to have body... <laughs> I think uh, I think that's the way it works. And then along the other coordinate, you're going to have choice. Right? This is how you do these graphs. So on the positive polarity is yes. So yes is my body and yes is my choice. This is where everybody wants to be at. Because it's positive your body and positive your choice. Okay. But this is your body, but not your choice. This is the Fed level. This is, it's not your body and it's not your choice. Those are clones. <laughs> this is, it's not your body, but it is your choice. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah, something like that. I think it looks like that when you do it or it's something, something, something. This is motherfucking, these are NPCs. Listen, it's, it's, <laughs> ah, it's their choice, but it's not their bodies. I get it. Okay. But yeah, everybody wants to be up here, dog, where it's their body and their choice. 
But since people are saying the vaccines are your body, not your choice, and abortions are over here, they created an ill-ass little loop in terms of rhetoric. Not in how terms of humans feel or if you should pick the right side or the wrong side or whatever. It's just that the conversation can't go nowhere. It's gridlocked. Because if you say it's my body, my choice, then we can go into recent history and go, but what about the vaccines? And then the people who are in support of both, they're kind of like, I want everyone to get vaccinated and I want everyone to get an abortion. And then it just doesn't make sense because there's no moral route to stick off of to claim both of them. It's the illest ass drama ever. This is like classic motherfucking um, divide and conquer shit. But it, they're doing it on a social media level where there's like bot accounts, fake accounts, Chinese bots, starting the narratives with the fake likes and the fake retweets. And then you add your real two cents to it. That goes to your real three friends on Twitter. And then that turns into 30,000 people real quick. But my question is, how the fuck does a document leak from the Supreme Court? Do you know what kind of problem that is? On a governmental level, the Supreme Court leaked the document. Who the fuck do you have working in the Supreme Court? You know how many oaths these people take? And then someone went into that and leaked future legislation. So there's only two, two possibilities. You have agents in your ju judicial branch now who, have, who are using this information, these leaks, as a political weapon, which has the whole Russia-China thing impl implied into it to keep the right-wingers going, right? The leak itself. Like, it doesn't matter what they said. It's just, how did you leak it from the Supreme Court? Or you have something above the Supreme Court saying, hey, do this so we can get this reaction so that we can take the energy and put it in that direction. Either way, it's a PSYOP. Like, maybe not strictly CIA PSYOP, but the whole mechanisms of what this is causing people to do mentally, PSYOP. Don't get caught up. But, quote-unquote, black people, Moorish Americans, indigenous Americans... Autonomous Americans, whatever y'all want to be today, because we could be whatever we want. What did, what did God say? What's your name? I am that I am, nigga. Today, I'm a, ter, ter, a triceratops, if I want to be. Ain't that what every other group is saying? Hello. <laughs> Romeo Cruz, I see you, brother. And music says, was it a leak? Yeah, it was an alleged leak. For sure. That that whole this whole conversation is allegedly the side effect of a leak. The question is who leaked it and how? And what happens? If nothing happens and no one is drawn out and no one is penalized, then this shit's cap. POTY says the stats show that traveling to states and get it done numbers have risen, which funnels them to contain the data and interest in community aspect controlled by the greater. It's crazy. Bobby E. Shout out. Kevin Samuels, rest in peace, rest in peace. Long Beach Most Wanted, Clarence Thomas, come on now. James Reduce says, Cap. Long Beach Most Wanted says, I need some bots. I'm, I'm telling you, y'all can get Twitter bots for the low. They're everywhere. It's how you finesse them is the issue. Southeast proposed a bill to create a convention of states, which is the new confederate. Check the language. So a convention. So this is the actual website, right? I support the Conventions of States Project, a national effort to call a convention under Article 5 of the United States Constitution. Oh, so they're about to stumble into the goddamn Moorish paradigm. Restricted to proposing amendments that will impose fiscal restraints on the federal government, limit its power and jurisdiction, and impose term limits on its official members of Congress. So cool. So words connect. So we're talking about Roe versus Wade and abortions being federal level and the feds controlling your body. This particular group is saying, hey, we're also attacking the federal level because they're taxing us, you know, uh, taxation without representation. Like, why do you guys have so much control over what the states are doing? 
So although there's always some type of kink in it or some Ozark shit with white people and their governments, truthfully, they're right, though. But they don't know when it went wrong because they have been beneficiaries of the shadow corporation. So them pressing the buttons to get them to play the game the real way is going to be a shock for them. Because I don't think these people, no matter how pretty the website is, no matter how much legal leads they copy and paste, I don't think they really understand the history of our country at all. I think they have people who went to college for the mainstream narrative and some of the old narratives of the debates and stuff that got us to this point. But I think that whole 1800s reconstruction buffer, Civil War buffer, the bankruptcy in 1863, the Homestead Act, those things that led up until the bankruptcy after the creature of Jekyll Island around 1915, basically the time Noble Drew Ali was active, 1911 to 1922. If you get through that whole time where they get in the gold rush, 49ers, you get all that, destroy all those cities, destroy all the World Fair sites, put all the cities on fire. Because remember, in the 1800s, every metropolis that we know today is caught fire. But these buildings have been there for X amount of years, maybe hundreds. But now they're just catching fire, right? And then they're going to call when they're done, reconstruction. Come on, my nigga. Then you go to pass all that, you get up to 1930s, and then the people in Congress are like, yo, I hope we didn't sell our country to the same people who put us in this situation. And in his case, he's talking about the centralized banking cartel. So, let white people wake up any way they want to. We're waiting for them. They're going to be more upset than we are. I promise you that. What's good, Swan J? I dropped some Studio One Learning to come chill. I appreciate you. Mars Champion, I see you glowing, bro. Will Ty, the time traveler. He said, shout out to the tribe. Love to the tribe, the goddesses, the gods, and the cosmic moms. I know that's right. POTY says, this was on our front page in South Carolina. They're, pr they're separating for the USA again. Oh, they have to. But the problem is they can't do it legally because they don't own the states. Remember, when you go to these cities, it says incorporated. If they're incorporated, they're under the fucking um, United States uh, USC codes as well. So basically, you can't create a... I, I'll, I'll draw a diagram of what the United States is similar to. Don't get me to lie to you, though. Don't always do your own research and shit, because I know a little bit. I know a little bit to understand, but I really don't be understanding, because these niggas play too much. So imagine you had Domino's, right? Like a, a pizza chain, Domino's Pizza. And let's say that represents the United States infrastructure or corporation, right? Now, on a state level, you're going, hey, I want to start a Domino's franchise. And you cough up, what, what does it cost to do franchises? Anywhere from 10000 to 50000 right? You cough up the money, you get the loan to get the equipment, and now you have a Domino's in South Carolina. So this is a state. This is a state operating through the Articles given to them by dominoes. So these states exist and are incorporated on the rule set. M m mind you, the United States is nothing but Dungeons and Dragons, right? If you understand why people love Dungeons and Dragons, that's exactly how your government is. Niggas just making up shit according to a rule book. That's it. It go no further than that. They don't understand them laws they be giving us, my nigga. Think about that. How can that person be on TV telling you about what he's doing, but he needs someone else a press secretary or a motherfucking law student or intern to actually do the legalese. So what the fuck do they know? You know what I'm saying? Like, it gets real weird and real choppy real fast. But anyway, so you got Domino's, United States of America. You got the franchise opening as 50 states in certain municipalities. They incorporate their capital cities, right? And then they own some shit like, yo, I want to go in a different direction. I still want to sell Domino's pizza but I don't want to pay Domino's taxes or I don't want to pay that re-up fee or I don't want them to dictate anytime there's a seasonal flavor, we got to remove pineapple because people where we live um, love pineapple. So they want their own independent Domino's franchise or business. And they don't want to change the name either. They don't want to change it to South Carolina Pizza. They want to keep it Domino's, so they keep the clout. They want to keep their uh, machines. They want to keep their workflow. They want to keep their plug to the farmers for the tomato sauce, but they don't want to pay their fees. So Domino's is like, yo, we're in a transition as a franchise, as a, not a franchise, but as a corporation. So here's these system-wide things that we want to put in place. 
And the franchisees is going, but you're about to fuck up our bag. So they could fuck up the bag on different levels, especially in federal cases where like on a state level in the South where they put niggas in prison for nothing to work for free. If they legalize weed federally, then it messes up the bag for the states who are getting federal money to host prisoners on a state level for doing dumb shit that shouldn't be in prison for years and years and years for. So if the feds go, all right, we want to try Washington and Oregon. There's not too many Negroes of free label there. Let's do it this way. And then the other states go, well, now we got to release our people. And over 75%, I imagine, are in there for these bullshit ass drug charges. Right? No one's going to, no one's, no one's upset about the rapists and the murderers. Just drug people. People who do or sell drugs. You let them out because it's no longer a, a federal crime. Now you're fucking up the state's bag. That's just on one level. Then if we get into the quote unquote human trafficking level and the abortion and the organ harvesting conspiracies, and you see how states may be able to benefit from those areas that allow abortions. Because where do those fetal cells go to? Then you cut off that. And all the programs that come from that, all the medicine that comes from that, all that third party revenue that comes from an aborted fetus. And then you're taking it out of the state's hands. While they're allegedly closing down all these human trafficking rings at the same time that this is coming forward. Come on now, you just gotta pay attention just a little bit. There's a whole bunch of different things, I'm sure. I'm sure there's shit that I'm missing too, but this one's not hard to miss. They're having money problems. If you're having money problems, I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems, and the federal government ain't one. Hit me, damn. And I already told you that the federal government is what? It means an alliance with the church. El Federales. Y'all thought that shit was like a Mexican trying to say federal. No, that's the original word, Federales. The Federales are those who are carrying out the will of the Vatican and the will of God, the Pope. So if the Catholic Church and the Pope is like, A.L., hey, we came here to collect. Now the states are feeling some type of way like, A.L., hey, we got to be able to wiggle out of that because we're tired of this man over there telling us what to do over here. For the past two decades, we've been flunked out. Like, what are we getting out of this? And then you get into Jordan Maxwell because Jordan Maxwell explains this connection that I'm talking about. Jordan Maxwell is, has a mastery <laughs> of explaining this dynamic between the church, the state, and the federal government and how this all coalesces from a legal standpoint. And they take him off the fucking chessboard. Serendipitously, whether he died of natural causes or they had to move him on to the next dimension, he's gone now. And his legacy is this outline. His legacy is explaining how these moving parts move together. And we're witnessing the breakdown of it as he passes away. And everyone else has been forecasting the same thing. That's exactly why, if I was to guess what's happening to us right now, we're in the middle of a war and we're losing. They said that warfare in the future is going to be uh, cyber warfare, right? And you think that means that niggas is going to hack your weak ass Gmail accounts and still like your motherfucking memberships to Netflix and Hulu. Just join Credit Karma. They trace that for you. But that's not the cybernetic warfare. Cyber warfare is how they mobilize and weaponize information to a given populace. So if we're biting onto all these current events, if we're biting onto all these narratives, and we're unable to prov provide a second, third, fourth, fifth tier thought about it, we're just going to be going for the okie doke because it's separating us. That polarity in that, in that grid, you're going to find a whole bunch of people trying to lean towards the positive side. And it's going to be like this. I'm going to draw a bunch of circles for where people are landing. People are landing all up near the median point of positivity for the most part. And they're arguing against each other about how right they are, how wrong they are, but they're all standing in the same quadrant. This is, this is warfare. We're at war. The whole thing. Man versus, this is war. There's a time for peace and a time for war. The brother Benjamin Banneker, a.k.a. Benjamin Franklin, sent that letter to your boy um, Thomas Jefferson with the almanac. And he wrote him that letter saying, yo, while we're in the middle of peace, you know, we should get ready for war. But now we're in the, now we're in the middle of this war. I guess it was a revolutionary war. Now that this war is dying down, let's get them prepared for peace. So if... 
that was true at the founding of this country. They still do it now. They're preparing us for war if we're not in a war already. And I think people have to be of a certain polarity mind state, not for the topics that we're at odds about. Because mind you, all this shit is going to, we're going to forget all this happened. That's why I did this video. I wanted to be a bookmark in time based on how we feel right now and what we're saying and seeing right now. But give it about six more months to a year when the polarity finally manifests in the way that we need to be primed, if you will. It's like preloading something into a system. Like they're preloading us with this attitude. Let's call it that. It's like this, this attitude they're giving everyone. And you think it's about these things. You think it's about your personal relationships. You think it's about your personal life. But what they're really doing is getting setting the tone so that when they beat the war drums, you're so frustrated, flunked out, broke, hungry, tired of the bullshit that whatever narrative they give us next, system-wide, not in these specific groups where they have us at odds with each other, but once they go, hey, guys, stop fighting and arguing with each other. Look at those guys. They're the bad guys. And then, boom, we rush in and stomp them out because we have to spend that energy. See, like, if we're at a low vibration because of the pandemic and, you know, a lot of people are at a super duper low vibration because people have died. I know I've lost at least five people in my family tree that I met and knew and talked to within two years alone. Losing one person is hard. Losing two people is hard, but mad people are losing people even in higher numbers. So you're already grieving. Whether or not you're in that mode, it's still in your nervous system that way. You go forward, and then you have issues with the finances. More grief. Go forward. Now there's issues with the housing market. More grief. Go forward, and now Bitcoin and NFT kind of, you know, the novelty kind of wore off. Now you're grieving. The video games suck. Now you're grieving. The music sucks. You're grieving. You understand what I'm saying to you? The, the whole thing that I've been bitching about and, like, marking and commenting about, I know it's artificial. All this, all this mids is on purpose. It's to get you frustrated and uncomfortable. So what effect? We don't know yet. But it's working, damn it. It, it, is, it is prolific. I got to applaud these niggas. They're, they're really good at manipulating the human psyche. Because if they can get us all in a certain state, then they can use that charge and hit a Kamehameha against whoever the fuck the target is. I'm, I'm not sure who the target is yet. You would think it's like, ah, oh, it's black people. Black people, quote unquote, black people in America deserve to be suspicious at all times. But I don't think we're the target this time. I think they're targeting us to get our rage machine going. Because we will rage up. We will get angry. We will act the fuck up. But they somehow channel that energy. They somehow repurpose that energy to the war efforts. Just like they did in Vietnam and everything else. So I don't put it past these niggas. Yeah, it's just like Vietnam, right? We had the war in Vietnam, the hippie era, the um, proliferation of acid LSD shrooms and debauchery, repurposing the structures or roles predominantly in white societies, but secondarily in the black woman or the mother's role since the husband was absent to fight the war for the country. You have all these things hitting those people at once. And you got Marvin Gaye singing, what's going on, brother? What's going on? You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot. So if we're locked into a 70s holding pattern again, nigga, no, no one signed up for it. I want the 90s, nigga. I want Home Alone. I want Trump Towers. I want arcade machines, my nigga. We have self-driving cars. Now we need self-driving hovercrafts. Motherfucker, y'all promised us the Jetsons. Y'all promised us this shit, bro. That's the only reason why I decided to go this hard. It's the only reason why I picked up computer programming. You told me we were headed to the motherfucking future. And we're in goddamn 1975. For what? To fight Ukraine and Russia? <laughs> On over Genghis Khan's dead body we are. Then we wouldn't even get nothing from that. We can't get more land. And I think that's the part that everyone forgets. All these efforts on the behest of the United States seemingly are NATO and Israel. The United States can't get more land. It's not going to happen. They're gridlocked. The only thing the world can do is somehow gain agreement to say fuck the structure of society 
and civilization. And we're going to start over. And we're going to start over with these weapons and these principles. And all of you can go eat a dick. And I haven't seen nobody get on TV with balls that size. Man or woman. Martin and Blue Street. Trafficking promo. Masters and Sharifs. Romeo says in the next few years is all about to reset the financial system to default and put in digital money. They don't need all this to give us digital money. They're not, they're not priming us for war to give us fucking credit cards, dog. We've had a digital global banking system since the 70s. There it is again. As soon as they introduced credit cards, they had a digital system. So they're not really converting us over to... So I say this. If you go to the World Economic Forum and they talk about the global reset, you're going to see that the narrative, they're not talking about the United States. They're talking about the world. Basically, every world power is going to require an internet connection that has a centralized data point. Whether that's cloud-based and, you know, routed and forwarded. But basically, so you got to think of not of the... When they talk like that, fuck the part where you see financial. Fuck the part where you think about going to the store and paying your bills. They're not talking about that. They're talking about technology. So they're doing a financial reset and they're uniting it to a digital. So now we're talking about technology. Fuck the Bitcoin versus US greenback dollar. That whole system was digital anyway. They're talking about the technology. So the technology that they need to do a world global reset is that they have to install the infrastructure and the AI and all these critical points of where their ports are, where their markets are and all that. So it's like they're hiring a bunch of IT people. Once those installations are over, just like any other government contractor job, then they can hit the button and go, cool. This is all either decentralized Bitcoin or it's all centralized decentralized Bitcoin. And it doesn't matter what they call it. It doesn't matter what it ends up being because it's really not about the localized currencies. It's about the global banks that own the property or the titles. Not even own, let's say possess. It's about the, the bankers that possess the titles being able to centralize their efforts because they're the ones who run it. When it trickles down to us in this uncomfortability, only thing that the United States is priming United States citizens to do is that you're headed forward into a society that's not going to have mundane jobs no more. So now you guys have to get used to being an information technology society. And that's why social media plays such a big role in our society more so than other nations and countries, because we're the guinea pigs for what an ITS continent that produces information looks like. It doesn't matter if it's good information or bad information. It doesn't matter if it's um, positive or negative. It doesn't matter if it's intellectual or not. It's just information. And we sell that information to other countries. Because you remember, there's a lot of so-called third world countries Remember, there's a lot of countries that don't speak English. Remember, there's a lot of countries that aren't operating off a capitalistic idea. So we're the guinea pigs that are interfacing with the world where they get to see us, the best of us and the worst of us, to upgrade the global community. That's why this whole metaverse idea is a thing. This whole avatar principle. They're selling your likeness to other communities, whether that be overtly or whether that be through how black people do something cool and then the rest of the world kind of emulates it, but it takes them like 10 or 20 years to do so. Oh man, that's the bomb, cuz. With the fucking tilted throwback hats and the baggy jeans and shit. You go to fucking Japan and you think you in Crenshaw. They still tipping on four fours. Like, I don't get it. But imagine that, but in light speed. And if you believe there's a multiverse... And if you believe there's other planets or other communities of beings that are not so closely related to us, then you don't fucking, you motherfucking love in hip hop America, nigga. We're the Sims, my nigga, to the, to the world or the Galactic Confederation or whatever the fuck they want to call it. That's America's angle. America's like, we don't have enough trees to build houses on Mars, but we got enough niggas to create culture. Let's go. That's it. It don't go no further than that.
P.O.T.Y. says, no, they used the Black Lives Matter fuel to take our narrative and use it as normal. Yep, and we were calling that out then. Quan John says, Benjamin Banneker is Benjamin Franklin now. Which dailies was this? Oh, no, that was some private information. I didn't mean to say that, you know, just throw that out there all dastardly like that. I suspect <laughs> that Benjamin Banneker is indeed Benjamin Franklin. I do not suspect that any of the founding fathers are real names, nor are they the people matching the painting at all. Because like I said, the camera comes out maybe 10, 20 years after the Barbary Wars, and there's no picture of Jefferson. No picture of Washington, no picture of Ben Franklin, no picture of none of the founding fathers that gave these people this country. But there's a hundred photos or more of ex-slaves. It don't make no fucking sense unless that ex-slave wasn't a slave and he was the president. Etc, etc, etc. And there's hundreds of examples of that. So I think they did the palette swap during the Civil War. So by the eight, the mid 18th or the mid 19th century, aka the mid 1800s, they just fucking palette swapped. So a lot of that clout that you see that is Masonic from Benjamin Franklin, to me, it makes more sense because I can prove that Benjamin Banneker and Thomas Jefferson were colleagues. I can prove that Benjamin Banneker was a Mason. I can prove all of that. So if he's colleagues with the Thomas Jefferson character and he's the super duper Mason general that helped George Washington during the revolutionary turnaround, then it's possible that they took this one super Negro and bust him down into two, three, four personas because he's also Prince Hall. So they take one Negro and they make him three more, three fifths of man type beat. Get it? They do the same thing with the Harriet Tubman narrative. She has like 20 new storylines now because she now is the symbol for the Underground Railroad. She's now the symbol for the subway Tartarian system. She's the symbol for like spying. She's the symbol for, I mean, if you want to get real funky with it, she betrayed her own people. Because she worked for the ops, right? She worked for the government that installed slavery. So how are you working for the government that's saying it's okay to be a slave, but you're freeing, what? Well, come on. And then you get a pension from the same said government that you freed all those slaves from? Think about it. Why would the character Harriet Tubman be paid for her services and her efforts if she undermined during the quote-unquote most racist times ever? They felt bad enough for her to throw her $20 a year? They wouldn't have given her shit because of how much cargo she fucking let fall into the ocean, right? She supposedly freed hundreds if not thousands of slaves, right? Now you put a price tag on it. And they're going to pay her for her service to who? To the union? Nigga, if you don't get your ass, the whole shit's cap. I know. Don't don't stretch yourself out trying to figure it out. All I'm saying is they, they, they mimic. They'll bust down one person and make three more people out of them. Know that. Will Ty says the ROI ain't worth the mids. It's not. Thankfully, that mindset saw itself max out and get nowhere. A culture reselling exportation. Facts. Romeo says they will fail, but in the process, will already fuck up the economy to get the great reset. So supply chain problems, not enough food will be the kind of norm in the next few years. Romeo says we can prepare for it. And when they fail, be ready to establish something good for everybody. Here's the problem. If it fails locally, you don't solve the problem. We are a satellite corporation. If I'm honest with you, the United States itself is not the franchise. It's the franchisee. So you see how up here I have the dominoes is the U.S.? That's not the problem. The United States of America could fall and not fuck up the U.S. corporation. I need y'all to understand the difference in these, or not even understand it, but consider, I should say. Because it's hard to understand. that, that I barely understand it, so I'm not going to use that word. Understand, overstand. Pots and pans, just, just this is part. This is the U.S. of America. And you think it means United States, like the 50 states that compose of America, right? No. Because then you have the U.S. of Brazil.
You got the U.S. of... I forgot. There's like f at least three... No? America, United States of Brazil, United States of Mexico. There's another one. I think there's five. America, Brazil, Mexico. Mind you, none of this includes Canada. And they're part of the bullshit too. But they're ran by Britain. There's a few of them. But the prefixes, that's the total corporation. So when you see things happening in Venezuela that's reminiscent of what's happening to us now, that's just showing you the chain of events happening to the U.S. itself. The U.S. is the church. So even if you overthrow your localized franchise manager and you bought the business from him, you still owe the church, the circle. You're still dealing with the chancery. You're still dealing with the same characters who are giving you your money system. Because you're not going to overthrow your government, restabilize, and then use your own money too. Because you have to think about something that most people who have these conversations don't bring up. You owe the world, Craig. So where are you going to get credit from? That's, that's, that's why this whole thing is fucking gridlocked. Because, quote unquote, if the original American inhabitants... If we don't do it, it can't be done. Because at best, what we can do is make the claims in the proclamation saying, hey, we're restoring to our original seats of power. We're accessing our original debt notes, our original bonds, and our original land titles. We're going to return all that back to the estate, which is what these really are. Mind you, the church is just the overseer of the estates, Espanol. Estados. But remember, they started as estates. Remember, estates have, you know, the power of attorney. And um, what is that nigga in your family called every time grandma die, the wrong uncle get the power of attorney, then he cashes all the checks. Boom. That's the United States Corporation. They don't own the estates. They're managers of the estates. They're the. Uh, I don't know. Beneficiaries. There we go. They're representing the estates on behalf of the beneficiaries, but there's no beneficiaries standing up to the plate who know this. Because something happened that wiped out all of our memories and recent history. Uh, uh, what is that called? Because it's not like it's because we spoke another language and we didn't go to the schools per se. We don't even understand, comprehend, or remember the paradigm that got us here. The only thing we know is what we're told in school, which is very problematic for any civilization. Especially when you tell me Negroes are so cute and clamorous that they dance, sing, and freestyle all day, but there's no song telling us what happened for the past 150 years. Nowhere. And it's not in the school books either. That shit's all big cap. Those are like cliff notes for the shit that they need you to know so that you can function in society. That's not the narrative. You, you should have your own individual narrative from 100 grandfathers ago. There's no reason why that chain link should be broken when you can't access the memories of three grandparents ago. You can't access the memories of your grandparents that lived in the mid-1800s. There's a fucking problem with that. And that's not normal for it to be system-wide. And it doesn't matter if you're a slave or not. Even if you were a slave, per se. Then what do we got? We got 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 6. So you have like 64, quote-unquote, slaves in your family tree from the 1800s alone. You should have at least one of their stories. Because there's 64 of them. You have none of their stories. You'd be lucky to get Ancestry.com to link you to one of them. But mind you, anytime you find a great, great, great anything, you're doubling the amount of others there were there to make you. You double every generation. So nah, nigga, like, you should have 128 stories from there, 256 from the 1700s, and they should have all made it because a lot of those people should be related to you today so that both of the stories can coalesce. It doesn't happen that way. And it's very strange to fucking me. But anyway, the shit's rigged. You ain't overthrowing this government. Because it's not the government that's the problem. It's the, it's the uh, people managing the estate on a banking level, legal level. It's not the people you're voting into positions to act that's what it says, acting as mayor, acting as secretary of state, acting as this. That's what all that's about. They're not those people, bro. 
What did what your boy um Rich Homie Kwan say? You not the nigga you claim you is. You know, you know, you know. They're not the niggas they claim they are, bro. We're worse off than you think. But then we're better off than you think. Because the thing that's got us fucked up is the information they gave us causes us to create solutions that don't work. Because we don't understand the system. That's intentional. That's not your fault. They gave you all the ingredients to keep fucking up the Kool-Aid. So you're going to march today. You're going to BLM tomorrow. You're going to protest. You, you're gonna, you, what are you going to do? You're not going to spend your money on Black Friday? Nigga, if you don't get your ass on... The money is in their banks. People who print money don't need money. That's the biggest illusion of them all. And much respect to Louis Farrakhan. Because I know a lot of us get it trickled down from his thing saying, hey, the black community has this big ass buying power. If they withdrew from certain activities or corporations, they would make their voices heard. Yeah, by the fucking corporations. But we're not at war with corporations. Like, why are you at money? Think about it. You're going to war with the people you spend money with. That's called an L dummy mission. Why the fuck would I be fighting Walmart and Target? I need to fight the niggas that said it was okay for Walmart and Target to overthrow the small businesses in my community. That's not Walmart and Target. Again, you're attacking the wrong thing. So you withdraw all your money from Target and then fucking what? It's in your bank account where it's generating interest for the bankers. So if you took out a trillion dollars out of the black economy and we sat on it for what, a, a day? We, you know we get some Popeye's chicken. Don't fucking play around with me. Two days. Let's say niggas held their money in a bank for a week. How much interest does that generate? Who the fuck are you going to war with? When you spend money, interest is generated. When you hold money, interest is generated. Who are you going to war with? The person that's always putting you in perpetual debt? It don't matter where you spend your fucking money. The, the whole shit is just uh, is virtual signaling. It makes you feel better that maybe one day we could get together and not support Gucci no more. You're still spending USD. Or you're still not spending USD. The fact of the matter is, if your Gucci belt costs $500 and you don't buy Gucci belts no more, does that mean you're no longer spending $500 though? Because if the answer is, I'm just going to spend it with someone else or on something else, such as bills, because bills don't fucking stop, you still spent $500 fucking dollars. Where does that money go? Who's accounting for it? The person that's charging interest and taxes. It's not about the fucking things you're spending on. It's about the fact that you even use money. That's why these half-assed digital cryptocurrency narratives kind of feel a little better. Because they're making you feel like you're in control of your money if you do it digitally. It's about who controls money. It's not about who tells you where to spend it. Well, no, no, no. It's about who controls money. That is the water. That is the energy, right? Jordan Maxwell just opened up this segment perfectly. He told you why they give you a birth certificate, right? You're still operating as someone who spends their money. You still report taxes. You're still part of their system. It don't matter where your money goes. That's the illusion on a cultural community level. If you want to make grandma happy, if you want to align with your pastor, if you want to run for student council and put fucking food closets in middle schools, yes, niggas, we should get together and put money into those things rather than Gucci belts. But you're not fixing the fucking problem because no matter how much fucking food is in that pantry and how many uniforms are in that fucking school, they're still brainwashing your children to be fucking stupid. And that's where we get stuck at. We go, yo, we want to make it mad comfortable and mad approachable and mad affordable for us to be brainwashed. If you want to know what the problem is, the fuck are we talking about? I don't get it. Like, why can't, why aren't these, why isn't your boy, um, boy, um, Mr. Watkins talking about this? Umar Utunde, Tariq Nasheed, how come they're not talking about this? It doesn't matter what you fucking do with the money. The, the issue is the money. The issue is the actual money, not the where you spend it, where you save it, what house you bought that you don't own. It's the fact that you're using that currency to begin with, and that currency belongs to someone who is not your government. So you cannot protest your government to fix it because your government doesn't can't clear its debts with the people who gave them the money. That was the whole demonstration of the motherfucking governmental collapse in the 1930s. The niggas went to the United States government and did this. Listen, I'm the captain now. Did you know that that Tom Hanks movie wasn't the first time that they've done that? That was Star Trek that started that. 
I think um Perca- not Putin. what was it Kirk I think Captain Kirk was teleported to someone's ship some kind of alien that was doing some type of illusions or something and he went into the main hole and he says look at me I'm the captain now <laughs> I was like holy shit they the whole time they thought the Somalian made that up they got they caught me slipping shout out to Star Trek but anyway it's just like that the banking the banking cartel looked at the United States government in air quotes and said listen we're the captain now. We're the treasury. You're using our money. You're using our interest rates. All your bases are belong to us. The end. Game over. Can't do nothing about it unless you want to pay us back. Oh, you can't pay us back. Because if you think you could pay us back, then you'd have to be the payee and the payer. And I know that you're not those people. So I need you to act like you're those people. And as long as you're acting like these people, we'll give you the positions we give you the technology. We give you some of the clout. But if you ever think about overturning us, maybe something has to happen. Maybe certain information has to come out. Maybe certain things need to be released so that your people can see that you betrayed them. Because we will spend a decade eating our own once that kind of information comes out. Before you can even think of who the bankers were. The bankers will be walking down the street eating popcorn and an M&M t-shirt next to y'all asses and you won't even know who they are. So nah, bro, nah, we ain't, we ain't overcoming this with no votes, well wishings, or none of that. That's not where we're at right now. Will Ty says, they are the custodians, the fiduciaries. They just so happen to go beyond their duty. That's it. They don't go no further than that except for when they do. Troy Lav, what's good, man? What's good, Average Joe? I see you. Sounds like we have more weapons for prosperity since they're running out of plays. Mars Champion. To that effect. Bangs B says, damn, I just spent $500 on the Claret 2 Pre. You still in the, it's still in this. It's, well, you better let it circulate. I think 9400 got a beat called Circulate that talks about this. Amexum says this, there's something on a biological level that is involved with this mass global amnesia that seems to have happened. It's like a chunk of time has been sequestered off somewhere. Thank you, Amexum. Step into the world. You feel me? We call this segment timeline hopping. Because you're right. While the humans are getting uncomfortable because the alleged solar planetary energies... You have a different group of people who are neither banker nor government trying to work out a different equation. And this has all happened simultaneously as well. Um, They're also dealing with it at CERN. I think they fired up CERN a week or two ago and didn't tell nobody. Y'all remember that? Probably not. Remember all those um, mass corona ejections we had all of April? Probably not. You know what I'm saying? We have all these rare eclipse events. And I'm sure Kevin Samuel's death probably aligned with certain grid points as it pertains to the sky clock. And the way they killed him, when they killed him, and what type of harvest they sowed with his energy. Um, Whether during his death or during the narrative of his death, they are corralling a certain energy at a certain time to a certain effect. And then the question you have to ask yourself is, who understands it on that level to play the game and the magic at that level, if such a level exists. And I'm afraid to tell you, those people look like us. So when Amexum is alluding to the fact that he feels like it might be a biological thing that caused humanity to lose its collective memory, don't forget there's magic. Um, certain things in magic are very simple. They could be material related, right? So if I was to have a prime candidate on any memory issues, I would think fluoride, right? Fluoride destroyed our farmlands. Did you know that? That's why we had to get everything from China. It's because we contaminated the water table with all these things, including the runoff from pharmaceutical drugs, but in particular, the nuclear waste that we circulated by creating derivative works out of nuclear waste that get thrown back into the dumps, that get to the water table, the fluoride to clean the water, the chlorine to clean the water that gets back into the water table, And we just corrupted the estates that they had control over. 
And there's way more land they can use, but they don't own that land. They didn't incorporate that land, a.k.a. the church or the queen didn't give them that land to do that, too, which is why the federal government is interesting to me, because they can tell most people what to do and how to do it only on the land that they're permitted to. So you could be like right next door to a nigga and they can't touch you if you know where those spots are. I think there's a spot like that in Los Angeles, which is still ran by the indigenous people. It's like a little city block just cut out that has its own independent structure. But you take an Uber out of there, your ass is now in Los Angeles County. It was either that or the Bay Area. I don't remember exactly. But yeah, don't, for, don't forget. Don't forget magic exists. That's a real thing to, to one degree or another, whether it's self-fulfilling or power suggestion or some other third party energy entity spiritual force. That could account for it, too. Um, the railroad tracks, they say iron keeps away what? Certain types of werewolves or vampires, right? This one's not overt. This one you had to put on your thinking cap for. But if you go to most cities in the South, and I can only assume it's like that in the Detroit regions in California, their main street is divided by railroad tracks. So in most cities, especially here in the Carolinas, if you go to their main street where the banking is and the trade is and the marketplaces are, it's, it's parallel with a train track. If you cross that train track, then you're in a residential area where they would say these are plantation houses, a.k.a. Bonnevilles, a.k.a. this is where the niggas live. And then in modern day times, those same dynamics play out. Now it seems like the poor people live on the side of the train track that the main street is opposite of. So it's this duality polarity thing, though we know the palette swap occurred in the 1800s. So a lot of people suppose the reason why certain cities do not get the same amount of uh, paranormal activity from goose, ghosts, wraiths, um, elementals and things like that is because of the train tracks. Because the train tracks emit a certain energy that's kind of like a firewall. Similar to like a fly. A fly can't see white. So if you want to catch a fly, use a white paper towel. You can catch a fly because they can't see it. Same thing allegedly to the properties of railroad tracks. Don't quote me on that one. That that was that that I just throwing that out there in the ether. Just letting you know what it's about. The potential for the potentialities. So you have that. That's curious to me. Then you have a bestos. Why did they ever use a bestos? What kind of effect does that have on the mind? Because remember. You don't have to track how they're fucking up your memory today. It's a little harder to do because you have so many videos and tweets. Even if you did have amnesia, you have a paper trail, if you will. Now, if they Web 3.0 it and they own your paper trail and they modify your paper trail, because now they're letting the camera phones change the metadata, which is bizarre, especially when it comes to court cases. But then you think about the type of people going to court who would have pictures that would incriminate them. That is an interesting flip. But anyway, our recent memory and lack thereof is based in lies anyway. So you had to figure out what chemical, what magic, what circumstance did they introduce to our great, great grandparents? Because your grandparents kind of like, ah, you know, we're the people that left the farms and went to the cities. They're on a different type of time. They were sold a dream by radio, newspapers, and magazines of this great lavish party life they're going to live. They're flunked out just by drugs or alcohol. You got prohibition. So you got your great-grandparents, some of them your grandparents, and you got your great-great-grandparents, them niggas, people born around 1920, people who are old enough to be aware of the gold rush, not the gold rush, but the uh, trading with the enemy act, where they had to turn their gold in. When they had to turn their gold into the centralized banks, this is how we lost our power as the quote-unquote black trillionaire community. We had, to, we had to turn our gold in or turn into enemies of the state, which is not the enemies of the feds, not the enemies of the church, the enemies of the state. And say, well, do the white people know? How far back can individual white family histories go in terms of the mainstream narrative? Do they have one? And then you go, okay, so they didn't do it to black people. They did it to white people. How do they do it to both? Well, if mRNA can do it with spike proteins, right? We assume this is a new technology, but if mRNA has the potential to do it to ward off disease and mRNA is transmitted sexually. Remember that if someone gets a vaccine, a vaccine, especially a woman, you have sex with her 
is there's a potential for her to transfer it to you. That's why they're talking about and flirting about putting these things, these type of devices into food. Hint, hint, wink, wink. History repeats itself, right? So if we could program mRNA to fuck with your immune system, could they program something similar to fuck with your memory base or that part of your brain that stores long-term memory or whatever this type of discussion is cataloged, however it's cataloged in the physical brain. Because not only did they damage the physical brain, they damaged the mind, which is non-local. Could they have done that 50 years ago? Like, let's say Agent Orange. Let's say that most of our great-great-grandfathers and great-grandfathers went to war for this country. And they were taking forced inoculations then, right? And then they go to war. If they live, they come back home and fuck on grandma, right? And then they gave birth to the generation of kids for whatever fucking reason, all fled their homes to go to the cities. What does Dr. Umar say? You don't find that suspicious? You don't find that suspicious? Because there's no, there's no explanation for it. You own your land already. You don't owe nothing on it. You grow your own food already. All you got to do is make a few dollars for a summer dress. And your auntie could probably make it. So why the fuck did you leave? And none of your families can explain a good enough answer that will satiate you, not just for the individual families, but why it was so many of the families that did that. They can't force them out nowhere. They weren't slaves in the 60s. Do you think scary white people had my big black ass uncles? They were like six, six and better. Like, oh, you better get around here, boy. Uh, who, who is boy, Mr. Rogers? Your five, six puny ass. With your pot belly pig looking head ass. Bitch, you can't even do the mumba number five. If you don't get your ass off my farm before I shoot you, and you know I fucking shoot you because I went to Vietnam. I'm crazy, nigga. Those niggas came back home and was like, oh, just leave. Man, if you don't get your ass, just to go up north, go to Chicago, go to Detroit, to work jobs, to buy another house? Come on, bro. Like, nah, nah. Someone has to explain this shit clearly to me to why so many families did it for no apparent reason, no unified reason. Every family had an, a, an original idea to leave in the same decade? Nah, that's just propaganda and hit markers, nigga. They did something to those people. That, that created some type of catalyst, kind of like they're doing now, to make it seem like that was the wise choice. And they probably did it through church. Probably had the pastors pushing that narrative, for real, for real, knowing how they weaponize the energy today. Pa pastors, newspapers, radio, and whatever Agent Orange chemical concoction, they were giving them boys coming back from war, including the sons. And then how many of your great-grandmas in them have like a white... uh? have a half white child. This is some new shit to me. I've been talking to people who have like mixed families, especially people from the North where they have like at least one relative that's light skinned it because for whatever reason, grandma decided to fuck on white people, but not just regular white people like the white Mr. Rogers down the street, but like a white person that used to be in the military. This random white person from Spain, Portugal, Dutchland, South Africa, wherever they're allegedly from. Because remember, they didn't have car faxes back then. They didn't have passport checks back then. They didn't have their Facebook accounts to verify they came from where they alleged they came from. But they come to this country while all the men are at war and grandma gets caught up in some kind of colonial love affair and has that one light-skinned child. Does, does anyone else's family have this particular narrative? Because I've seen it too many times and I got my eyebrows up. I'm paying attention to this shit like, the fuck? You know what they say? Once, twice, three times a lady. Nigga, no. You ain't going to three times me on this. That sounds like an agenda. Let me know if you know what I'm talking about. DJ V Live. Let's get these likes up. Yes, please get these likes up. I appreciate you guys. Haru says, I see where this is uh, going. <laughs> Amexum says, history rhymes indeed. Christo says, Abestos was used for a lot of homes and installations too. Yeah. POTY says, MG, check out Hookworm in the South. You notice some things today. The aspect of normalizing going outside oneself, leaving the house and not knowing why. POTY says, my grandpa bought land, a car, and a mule in Edgeville, South Carolina in 1940 at 32. Mm -hmm. After people before him left? Or was, was he the first generation landowner? Or are you just saying, in general, you're making a point to how old he was and how, and how fly he did it? And that's in the 40s. So he was... He was a 30-year-old in the 40s, so he was born in the 1910s, and he was buying his own land and his own resources in South Carolina. 
So that's after Reconstruction, but that's still... Basically, he bought his own ship back if he was a, an, an original or leased it back. There'd been no reason why he needed to buy land if his mother or grandmother owned all the land already. So that's around the time the jug happened, after post-Homestead uh, Acts. I think someone was... Fl I think Tariq Nasheed was flaming up one of these Fox dudes. Remember that Fox dude that used to be mad aggressive? He had that scrawled up face and he was always like calling people on their bullshit. They didn't like him too much, but that was his uh, character. That was his avatar. Man, I forgot his name. He retired or they got him out the paint maybe towards the end of Obama's term. Was it O'Reilly? Was it was Cameron was on there too? Oh, you mad because I'm styling on you type beat? Yeah, him. They were saying that his, he was talking about his father and how hard his father worked as a white man and who went to war for this country. And a lot of white people narratives, like white men in that age group, Gen Xers and older, will start that story with, my father was a patriot, he fought for this country. But if you follow up with that, so the rest of that sentence, the reason why their white father's a great man for fighting for this country is because when he finished fighting for this country, their fathers were given lands and houses they didn't have to pay for which then set up the initial infrastructure for their family to flourish. Whereas black families left those lands to go to war and came back to those lands and they're already torn from them. So it's double jeopardy. It was like, I own, I inherited this land before I left the war. I'm going to leave the war, I'm going to come back and I'm going to be relocated because something happened to it. Now the new locations in which I choose to move because of redlining and because of the banking cartels on a state level, they're going, no, if you want this land, you have to pay this much. Well, now if I have to pay that much, I have to work that much harder when I come back home. So it might take me five years, 10 years to do the same thing a white person did in their first six months. So then black people who are in the war go up north to work these factory jobs to get that money, thinking they're going to send the money back home and rebuild or rebuy land and shit in their familiar locations. And they go, ah, oh, it's just not worth it because so many of us are coming up here. There's nothing left there. The mean white people are there now. These foreign niggas who don't even speak English are there now. Why the fuck am I going back? I get it. But where's the narrative at? No, not Roland Martin. It was a, a, black, a white person talking about the GI Act or whatever. The, the, the act of the army giving white people houses during those wars. World War I, World War II, and prior. Versus the black people in the same wars, they didn't get houses, they lost houses. And then they had to work extra hard to buy a new one. That set the whole is offset a whole generation by them doing it that way, and let alone the brothers who didn't come back because they died, or they dropped them off in the ocean. Let's talk about it. Poty says, "Yeah, he bought it from a master wife." What do you mean he bought it from a master? There shouldn't have been no slave masters in 1940s. How did your How did your grandpa buy anything from a slave master? The slavery was outlawed by the Civil War, which would have gave it 80 years. There's no way that he bought it. Unless you're saying it was the old house of an old slave owner from 80 years prior. And he bought it to style on those niggas. But the funny shit is, if you go before that white slave owner, quote unquote, possessed that land, a black family owned the same house already. Likely the very house that the slaves grew up in. So he just bought his own family's house back. Because where the fuck you get these other niggas from? Who built the house? It wasn't white people. Those white people wasn't designing those style of houses. That's why you see that Victorian shit and all that. That's not what's in the South. That's not what's in Liberia. Matter of fact, the same architecture in the South of America is the same architecture that's in Liberia. And the only thing that Liberia and South Carolina and the South has in common is the niggas going back and forth. White people didn't do that. They don't build like that. Hence... Why they needed slaves. They didn't even know what food to eat when they got here. And they didn't want me to think they built all these damn cities. Fuck out of here. You didn't have time. Let alone the summers. The summers was fucking them up. That's why they couldn't work the fields like that. Fucking sun was killing them. Let's talk about it. For real, for real. Talking about house niggas. No, let's talk about house white people. Who are in a who are in the house because they couldn't be outside during the summer. Let's talk about it. Let's not let's not get cute and clamorous. 
Only the funk. That's my family coming out of Mississippi. My pops was very light-skinned, and it was through a rape. Well, think about that. How many families hide that through rape? Think about it. I'm glad you said that. And I, I'm not going to say this narrative to diminish your family. Because I don't know your family's story. And it'd be unfortunate if your father's father was a white rapist. Not trying to, you know, diminish that if that's historical fact. But I also know in my family, my dad's dad's mother is light-skinned. And similarly, her husband, which would be my great-grandfather, freed her, her twin sister, their brother, and their mom, the mom who would have been, quote-unquote, raped by a white man. My grandfather, a generation under, got all of them and brought them from Alabama to Pennsylvania. We assume that that woman and her three kids were products of rape of this white man, a.k.a. slave master. But there's a fucking problem with that narrative that I hear so many quote-unquote black people have. That's my great-grandmother. There was no slavery when that happened. So how could a slave master asserted his will on a slave 60 years removed from slavery? The people you're talking about are from the 1900s. This is way after slavery. Think about it. How long ago was 9-11? How long ago was life before the internet? Look how much life has changed in just 20 years. Now take your ass back to 1920. From, 19, from 1860. And that leaps and bounds alleged of civilization. They're not on that same type of time. They, they literally couldn't be because... By the time the slave owners who got fucked during the Civil War, if they were mostly white, and I doubt they were mostly white, black, white, or indifferent, because you got to remember, there's black slave masters too in the South, and this is kind of gets this this conversation gets real fucking trippy real fast. Like, so what happened to all the black slave owners and their slaves? But anyway, we're talking about that time period. So by the time our great grandparents are born, those people are dead. So it's their children. Their children didn't have a chance to have slaves. Boom, their grandchildren didn't have a chance to have slaves. So who were these white people raping great-grandma? I think it goes back to what I was saying. For some reason, these white men from these other countries were coming to our communities, fucking on these women while their husbands were gone. Then they come back from war, they come back from wherever they went to go work, and there's this new child being born, and it's a light-skinned baby, and we're like, who the fuck was the mailman in this neighborhood? And your grandma, in order to protect her image, she was like, well, the white man raped me. I'm telling you, dog. It don't, it don't sound pretty. But it happens to too many people. Like, you understand what I'm saying? Like, for it to be that many rapists in all of our families. Like, listen, there's a rapist in all of our families. And then you have to go, well, what are the odds that it was something else? You get into a weird, there you go, you get the man versus woman dichotomy all over again. Because how, how could your white, how could, so two things have to happen. Your black great-great-grandmother or under has to admit that she was fucking with a white dude. Off rippy. Because she can't hide the kid. And then the white man, who's usually foreign, has to go, hey, I'm in America and I'm a fucking rapist. Your fucking brothers, uncles, and everybody has the right to kill me. Nigga, what? Nah, it's too many. If it was just one or two cases, I'd be like, damn, that's fucked up. If it was during slavery, I'd be like, damn, that's fucked up. But this was the 1920s. This is fucking dine and dash, nigga. This is the motherfucking, these motherfuckers was doing the monster mash. You understand? They're doing the twist. They're the fucking, this is the proliferation of the Harlem Renaissance. What are we talking about? This is jazz music is about to be born. Niggas is going to New York and Harlem and shit, partying. Heroin is coming on the scene. Shout out to China for the opium. What are we talking about? These people were partying and bullshitting in the 20s. But they're all raped by a white slave master? There was no fucking slave masters. So it was just random white men that they met at the juke joint. Okay. He got a little too touchy, too feely, and grandma couldn't defend herself. Okay. I can now. Nah, now nah, we, we get into contextual rapes, and I get that. That shit's sick and especially heinous. But it's not slavery rape. 
I'm not trying to make a difference between rape, by the way. I'm just saying, the paradigm you put your mind in when you think of your great-grandmother being raped by a white man, you think she couldn't control nothing, the society was a certain way, it was fucked up, slavery was fucked up. But I'm just bringing to your attention that there was no slavery when that happened. So how else does that happen? How does a white person get that close to a black woman? This supposed to be Jim Crow, sundown towns, sundown towns, and all that shit too, right? This is supposed to be motherfucking Lovecraft country, right? So how the fuck did a white man get that close to our great grandmothers? Not just one, but all of them, because there's thousands of these stories in the 1900s. That's not, that's the point I'm trying to underline. Like we got the context fucked up. She wasn't working at the big white house with the white man who was had a plant. He didn't have a plantation no more. That's what the Homestead Act was about, to give these white people fucking land. They were given the 40 acres and a mule because they didn't own anything because they weren't the slaves. So even if your grandmother was raped by a slave master, chances are he was black. And if you get really funky, you go to the 1700s, the slave masters were black women. Y'all ain't ready for that conversation. Wondering why we loop in on black male versus black female energy. Because the black women were the slave owners. Because they were the property owners. Slaves are considered property. Hello. Did y'all listen to Jordan Maxwell? What are we talking about? Shit's crazy, bro. There was a form of slavery still practiced in the South. Sex was forced on her to work, so she getting paid small benefits that came from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That happens today. Only the fuck. I, I get you. Slavery still is still not in some parts of the South. Slavery is still parts of America. When niggas have to work for the corporation franchises to get a paycheck and to franchise these money. All of us are slaves. But what I'm what I'm talking about, what I'm zooming in on, is the autonomy of slaves. We're autonomous slaves. We can kind of go places on fixed highways, fixed exits. Fixed metropolises. So we have this illusion of freedom. The moment you get off the beaten path and said, yo, I want to pave this road to get to the fucking river faster. They'll come light your ass up. So you, so you have boundaries. So you feel more free. I'm talking about the slavery where everyone's on the fucking plantation together. And the white man is sneaking your auntie and your great, great, great grandmother into the bedroom somewhere like a fucking Django movie. What I'm saying is that whole time period is in the 1800s earlier than that. And it didn't have that much time because you had the American Revolutionary War before that. And then all the points of interest in the 1600s were the islands. Because the crops that were grown in the islands were not the crops that were grown in South Carolina. And then when you get to the Bonneville stuff and the people who owned the land in the South, thus fighting for the Confederacy, where why there were so many black people is because you're talking about black landowners defending their mothers. Because they're tribal people. And it's a matriarchal tribal lineage. Remember, we're indigenous people, not black people from Africa. So that whole blur where we go from African tradition to American colonial Confederate tradition is cap. Nah, we were here already. The Confederacy was a black Confederacy. Hence, Confederalis. They're against it. They were against the takeover. Separation of church and state and all that. Those are niggas. It <laughs> so, so, so much to say. If we get to the 1900s and white men are fucking on black women, it's because black women have lost their property or lost connections to their family inheritances. Now they're working for white people and white people are taking advantage of them. Fair point. But everyone has that story in their family that's here today. How? And what do white women think that that many white men were sucking and fucking on black women secretly, let alone aggressively or brutally through rape? There's no narrative about that. Well, what did the white woman feel when her white brother, father, husband was coming around and there's like 18 new light-skinned babies in the local church or school? They didn't know how to do math. You think the white women couldn't see? White women don't know what X and Y chromosomes are? Come on, my niggas. That would be a problem today. That would have been a widespread problem for it to be widespread in each of our families is what I'm saying. But allegedly there was Jim Crow. Okay. Pinky pinky type of beats. Rawless says, you're speaking nothing but the truth. We are in modern slavery nowadays. Yes, sir. Bobby E says, Homestead Act made it legal to sell land. Yes, sir. 
because we lost a war. Ada Sean J says, MG, we ain't talking about the Franklin D. Roosevelt and the 900,000 plus black farmers put their land in a trust. Uh-oh. I don't know that particular uh, blurb. I don't know the fact on that. So if they put their land in a trust and they can't sell it or take it from them, it becomes unalienable. Oh, that's smart. So nobody has that land right now besides the trust holders. That's why we have Daughters of the Confederate and Hillary Clinton, P-O-T-Y, yeah. Daughters of the Confederacy, the female Masons that are white, usually. Um, there's a few other women organizations that have co-opted this agenda. The Daughters of the Confederation is definitely one of them. But they seem so innocent. As a matter of fact, when they made the news, they actually made the news a few years ago that a black woman on CNN or something a random clip. This is when I first learned about this group, which is weird because, you know, how the universe likes to echo shit I be thinking or studying. She was on the news and it was a black, light-skinned woman talking about how great or honored she is to be part of this group. And I'm like, nigga, what? I'll never understand it. I'm not in those meetings. I don't know what the oath is. I don't know what's on the other side of the oath. So it's hard for me to judge the positive or negative polarity of it. But it's always the same type of person that does that, though. And from what I know about those type of people, they seem, quote unquote, clueless. But I might have to own up the reality that I'm the one without a clue because they keep doing it. They built Stone Mountain. They, tr they changed Stone Mountain. They say Stone Mountain was a ritual place. So are the, the Daughters of the Confederation witches? Because there's nothing but ritual sites up there. Shouts of Brother Red Pill. I think he disclosed that. Deshaun J says, MG, we all got similar stories when you check your own bloodline. Peace, peace. That's what I'm saying, dog. We, there's no reason why every black... Why is it that every would-be descendant of slave with the dark skin color has the same exact origin story as it pertains to anything before the 50s. We all have the same bleak, fuzzy, cloudy recollection of our family histories. We're all going to have a grandfather that owned some type of business. We're all going to have a grandmother that was like the matriarch. We're all going to have some type of uncle or somebody who was in the war. We're all going to have some type of situation where our family had to relocate from the Northwest... I'm sorry, the northeast to the west or the south to the northeast, like in a triangle fashion. We're all going to have that story. We're all going to have that one family member that went rogue. We're all going to have that great uncle or great grandfather who's a mason and knows everybody. But when you're growing up, you didn't meet nobody. You're going to have all these weird overlapping narratives or plot points for quote unquote black people that lived 60 to 120 years ago. And I have a fucking problem with that. They donated Confederate flags to NYC train, train station. No, the daughters paid and imported the stone to build the mountain. So you think Stone Mountain is an artificial island? Um, I'm sorry. An artificial mountain, an artificial mountain in Georgia that they paid for? I will have to look at ancient maps and see if there's something there. Just like they did with Stone, not Stonehenge, but the shit over there with the Washingtons. Not Washington Monument. Come on now, help me out. With the four ugly niggas that don't exist on the mountain face. I know the name of it. It's right there. It just won't come out my mouth. Pause. Mount Rushmore. It used to be something else. So I'm thinking, well, if they modify Mount Rushmore... They modified Stone Mountain. That's my logic. But I'll, I can do the research on Stone Mountain. No worries. I, I'll take your word for it. Because it, it really don't matter. It ain't their mountain to build. You hear what I'm saying to you? Especially not in that region of Georgia. There's nothing but niggas out there. Historically. Why are white people building shit? They have no history there. Because they didn't live there. Even if some general came marching through on some Winston Churchill shit. It ain't yours, nigga, so why are you building? It's mad disrespectful. When you go to Houston, it's like that, too, though. I went to Houston and saw their little Masonic Washington Monument 
at that uh, Bayou Park. Uh, and what's funny is that park is right next to the Federal Reserve Building. The Federal Reserve Building that's in um, Houston. There's a park over there near the museum, which has all the Masonic Confederate type shit popping. I was like, oh, there goes another white man that didn't exist. Mr. Houston, who are you for real? And what nigga are you substituted for? I Am Sight says, Stone Mountain was a native ritual site for thousands of years. Don't dare give credit to those pirates. That, that's where I was going with it. But I think it, what his point was, the Daughters of the Confederation paid or is responsible for the modification of that ritual site. Which is why I said, because I know the history of the site as a ritual site, there's a bunch of magic up there. There's a bunch of magical runes and um, people who do rituals there. A lot of their artifacts are up on top of that mountain as you travel up it. And the Brother Red Pill kind of disclosed that they broke up one of the uh, sites to stop the work. But he wouldn't give the pinpoint location of which one. There's obviously more than one. Mount Rushmore, Rush the Moors. Come on, George Desiree, you sitting in the back of the class. You peep, you peeping the science on it. You have a place called Mount Rushmore and a bunch of fake president heads on it that never existed. I hate it here. And the daughters own it, why? How does this work? Um, have any of you guys been privy to a brother by the name of Rod Hayes? I'm going to put y'all on to him if you haven't already, but I want you to approach this information with caution only because Rod Hayes, unfortunately, comes at a point in time of our collective narrative that puts him in a very vulnerable position because Rod Hayes is doing the circuit. He's, he's interviewing with all the would-be Black Consciousness channels. So he was on the same channel that Taj Street Bay is on. He was on Black Magic, which is Brother Rich's channel. He's probably headed to Sod Netter and all those different avenues. And the problem I have with people who do that circuit that way, that kind of come out of the shadows, is that we have a tendency of, in retrospect, saying, oh, that was an agent. So when you check him out, just, just keep that in mind that I want to give this brother the benefit of the doubt because he hasn't done nothing wrong yet. But when you've seen these cycles since Brother Polite and Forward, and you see how they push people through the way they're pushing Rod Hayes through, you just, you know, you know fool me once, you nigga. A fool can't be fooled again. Whatever George Bush was talking about, goddamn. Like, no, like, nah, y'all can't push him through this avenue. But they're pushing him through that avenue, so antennas up. But if you listen to his narrative, this will help you understand some other things on an esoteric level. This is Rod Hayes. Most of us could have an idea. And the line broke, the monkey got choked. And they all went to heaven in a little rowboat. <laughs> so it was like, I don't know. I don't Look, know. There oh, y'all playing with me. So yeah, he's doing his mall rounds. He's on the House of Reawakening Minds. He's on Black Magic uh, 363. He's doing the whole behind the ice wall narrative. He's doing the game. He's doing, basically, he's doing the dailies, but on these platforms, and he's bringing in the Anunnaki thing, so he has that parallel to Billy Carson's narrative, which I'm skittish of, too. But I'm with all that being said, check him out. This is what he looks like. And you'll even find some videos of him maybe like five to ten years younger, too. Because he's been, he didn't just come out of nowhere, but he's flashing hot out of nowhere, I should say. But he's been talking about very similar things and as it pertains to the matriarchy, as it pertains to the big mother, and how the tribal reconsolidation is going to happen. And But he places it on the behest of gang lords. So like... Uh, Larry Hoover and um, them brothers that are locked up right now. And then Malcolm, not Malcolm X's wife. Yeah, it would have been Malcolm X's wife, but now it's Farrakhan's wife. And he has this interesting narrative that ties it to the star story 
of the Anunnaki up until present time as it pertains to quote unquote black Americans. And it's interesting to me because I've been waiting for this moment. <laughs> I've been talking about this moment when this shit was going to go mainstream, when people, regular people are going to be having this conversation and they're going to be using these talking points from Rod Hayes and similar now. And then you have, you know, the young pharaohs under Rod Hayes coming up, echoing the same points, bringing something to it, whatever it is, by hook or by crook. And then you're going to find yourself in a, a position soon where everyone's going to be talking about the matriarchal lineage from space. Plot twist. The reasons why the black women can claim the land is because they are the black women or the descendants of the civilization that tamed the land. Now, we would love for to see and accept modern black women of that same cloth, but it's not quite downloaded yet. They don't have all those codes. But that's why it's the woman. The woman took over this planet. We're just what? We're XY, right? Is that correct? Are we XX or XY? The male. The male is just a, a woman that becomes a man. Like, we are kind of like, not a spinoff. Yes, men are just spinoffs of these women. And women set men on this planet to protect them, to protect their assets, to protect their land, to protect whatever this galactic, global, multi-dimensional, multi-planetary thing could be. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't been to the mountaintop with Martin. I don't know what's on the other side. But the prophets are coming, whether they're agents or not. The narrative is coming. And once the narrative is installed in the black community, irregardless of if they're agent or not, that becomes the paradigm because our collective imagination creates the, the um, roots for it. And once we create the roots for it, we're going to fill it in with whatever. And that's what I'm saying. The time is amongst us. X wise. The Dealey Plaza, Dallas, Texas. They got it there too? Site says, in Georgia, they pirated all of our ancestors' geological feature ritual sites and gave them stupid basic names to throw off the public. Names like Indian Rock and Indian Springs. However, they kept the rivers to their original names, probably for legal reasons. Yeah. The Daughters is gone with the wind. Yes, it's the babble, language, linguist, overall, the white info. Yep. Will Tax says, collective manifestation and energy usage, Mama Cosmos knows best. RTP says, we are indeed as males to XY. And then Rod Hayes will tell you that uh, Anunnaki come down here as men, but they don't have XY, they have YX. <clears throat> they have a YX configuration. And you wouldn't know who they are unless you see them on a blood or genetic level. And I thought that was interesting. I was like, what kind of cap are we introducing to this dancery? But he might be telling the truth. I don't know how to test which XY configuration niggas got, though. POTY says, if you're black, married, and die, your wife will have a fit and fight your kids for everything because if her name is not on it, it then by default goes to her children. Men are a spinoff of women. Yes. So the question is, what are women a spinoff off of? Mmm. Let us create man in our own image. Mm. He didn't say I create women in an image. God said let's create man in our image. Mm. Could that us men females? Mm. Will Ty likes to think that we're just having a cosmic firmware update. Not everything will be compatible. Yeah, so we're going through the update process. That's for damn sure. If you look at all the solar activity and planetary energies, we're going to get that information and those results, irregardless of the narrative for black people. But then you have the narrative for black people changing. Then you have the social roles being challenged and what it means to be a good man, what it means to be a good woman. 
And it's not like any of us can get that right because we weren't raised by good men and good women. We don't even have, we don't have an example. We have an ideal, but we don't have examples. So if anything, we could take that information and pass it on to the next generation as a suggestion box. But all that other shit is cap, dog. There's too many people having relationship problems, communication problems. There's just too many fucking problems right now to do anything right. Because even if you get it right on one level, it's going to be wrong on another level. Because society isn't well right now on a mental health level. Like you're dealing with people who damn near lost everyone they loved on the brink of a fucking meltdown. And we're trying to have fucking highbrow raising conversations and, you know justify whether or not someone like Kevin Samuels deserved respect when they're fucking dead. Like, how's that even a fucking conversation? They act like this nigga was R. Kelly, dog. Like, I promise you, I don't even want to promise you nothing. I don't even want to speak ill like that. But if there was someone who actually harmed kids or women and they died, they don't even get this kind of fanfare, dog. They act like this nigga ex exercising his opinion of capitalistic based standards on relationships was like way out of pocket though in that context for people who live that lifestyle and follow those rules he's 100 percent correct you see that shit on love and hip-hop the inverse of what he's talking about is what the love and hip-hop narratives are and he's in fucking atlanta for crying out loud like bro he ain't saying nothing new is the thing was he didn't pander to females that's what really upset, I think, the zeitgeist. He wasn't pandering to females. Hell, he wasn't even pandering to males. And it makes you question, like, because you notice when they first try to get him out of here, they try to question his sexuality. Like, oh, there's a picture and a video leaked and there was some man in the bed with him, but no one could reproduce that video. Like, oh, you know, he was an alpha or a kappa. And he's kind of soft and sus. It was like, yeah, I've seen plenty of metrosexuals in my day. Matter of fact, when I call out metrosexuals, I'm a hater. Because like, yo, you don't think that nigga's gay? And they're like, man, he's not gay. He's just like that. But when it was Kevin Samuels, like, nah, he's gay. That's why he disparages black women like that. But when you actually listen to him, all he was doing was the Libra thing. He was saying, if you expect to have this from your person, then you should balance out that scale and have this for that same person. His delivery was interesting and colorful. But what he was saying was, hey, What's good for the geese is good for the gander, my nigga. Like, you want a high-value man? Become a high-value woman. Then he goes into what a high-value man is, capitalistically. And then he goes to what a high-value woman would be, capitalistically. And basically, what he, what he showed you was, this is what it looks like on Instagram of what a successful man is. This is what it looks like on Instagram what a sex, successful woman is. And all you niggas are living on Instagram. So now what? He's very interesting. He's really hard on people who didn't have their bodies and their minds together. Like you're fat. What are you talking about? He said that to the boy. He said, yeah, you got little pockets. You're not packing anything. And you're fat. But you want a woman to do A, B, C, D, E, F, and G for you. And not a man that has it together. He was an equal opportunist hater. He was an equal opportunist hater. But... Listen to what he's saying. He's saying, yo, you, you, why you flunked out and complaining about the fact that you're not living your best life? How is that someone else's responsibility? You had to be accountable for your own shit is basically all the messages that they're troping of him. Even the clips I've seen, he's always calling people out on their shit like, yo, you don't have your shit together. How is that the man's fault? You don't have your shit together. How is that the bad woman's fault? You think the bad women from Instagram want a brother who, you know what I'm saying? You'll see the whole conversation. Then they also, right before his death, they tr they were untrending that light-skinned girl maybe a day or two prior where she had said uh, she doesn't want to date a man that only makes $100,000 a year because that's only $274 a day and her dinners average $300. So why would she do that to him? And there's a whole think piece about well, she she makes the money she wants. She she gets to talk that talk because seemingly she has her own business and these are her own personal requirements and she can demand a man have more money if she wants, if it works for her. So we've seen the same people that understood the gold digger narrative now attack Sam, Kevin Samuels, who said the same thing. 
that lady with the green eyes, the light skinned girl with the green eyes with the unkempt hair, is a high earning woman who wants a high earning man for her lifestyle. Matter of fact, there's other smaller videos of regular people having the same conversation on the fucking reels. They just kept playing these shits back to back, and I was like, what the fuck is this? So then, like, you see the comments in it, and then Kevin Samuels died, and these same people are upset. Like, Kevin Samuels said the same thing that the people I'm agreeing with said, but he was a man. I was like, I can't do it, boss. <laughs> Lisa Simpson, sign out, please. Robert Atkins says, elites been trading slaves since time began. Whites and blacks. They just call it human trafficking now. Yes, sir. Crystal says, MG, what's your outlook on hip-hop being exploited in exchange to a point that's lost its roots? Just thinking about how music has changed, aka not meaningful. Um, the proof is in the pudding. What did Tupac say? He said, the blacker the berry, the sweeter the juice. You, you don't like the juice that's being produced out of hip-hop at this moment. But it didn't lose its roots. Hip-hop is, is, is serving the same purpose it served me growing up. It's now serving a new generation. The thing is, it's a broader generation. It's not just Northeastern people with a chip on their shoulder because they're trying to survive in a new land and a new paradigm. And they're flunked out because of the projects. Now it's Iowa. Now it's Japan. Now it's lo-fi. Now it's regular people. Now it's white girls with white Air Force Ones. Hip-hop is now fully manifested and now it's serving individual classes of people where it needs to. Hip-hop has been neutralized from the sense of the origins and the energy that first brought it to life. But in terms of a, as a vehicle of dissemination of information and vibes, it does the same thing. We're just not in that generation. It's not So the music's a byproduct of the generation. You're not that generation no more. That's it. And then that's slanted and skewed because of metrics. And we got like fake plays and fake robots and fake farms. It's tilted into a really nasty state because of manipulation of numbers. But the actual songs that people are coming up with, that's that speaks to their generation. That speaks to that pansexual. It speaks to that you can't tell me how to live my life. It speaks to the, the same thing that Wu-Tang was saying. Except for when Wu-Tang said it, it was gangster. They were doing drugs, just like these kids are popping zannies and doing downers. They were selling drugs. Wu-Tang was fighting niggas at the concerts. These niggas are shooting niggas in the street. Like, there's no difference. Just the generational catalyst, the message is different because each generation has a different problem to solve. So did hip hop solve a problem for those who gave birth to it? At the end of the 70s, through the 80s, and boom in the 90s? I don't know. Only us who survived through that could really access that. But now hip-hop has moved on with uh, your boy uh, Little Nas X and that type of shit. Like, that's a whole nother movement. There's a whole nother level of representation that the spirit of hip-hop... If, if hip-hop was the Holy Spirit, it has now left Galilee and has went to foreign lands. That's it. It don't go no further than that. If you want to maintain the fidelity of it then those who are beneficiaries of it originally need to create it if we're not creating it we can't chastise the people who are the problem is the people who are creating it and getting the shine they're putting their money energy attention to do that while we're just observers me i create still i still talk and have narratives and have a, a struggle amount of influence but i can't do that shit by myself because I would need people to give a fuck about it. And the only people who give a fuck about it are the people in my age group. But if most of my people in my age group are tied up in work or raising their family, there's going to be a dead period. And then when we start getting into our midlife crises or our retirements or our, uh, when things kind of flow and the kids start leaving the house and you have those extra few hours to go on your computer or NPC again, you'll see another revival. You know what I'm saying? B2K will be on concert like fucking New Edition again. You feel me? Lord Willen, Method Man, Raekwon, and Ghostface are still alive, and they all fucking gray, talking that same shit. We haven't seen that just yet. We need 20 more years. But that, that gives our generation enough time to be done with the minimum requirements of manhood to then go back into what we truly love. So you just got to give it time, if, if that's what you're thinking.
P.O.T.Y. said if the brother Kevin Samuels was gay and open, then a black woman would have been entertained and he would have been trending. That's a sad, that's a sad swipe about it. But I kind of sense where you're going with that. I kind of feel like you would write too. I feel like you would be right. I feel like it would be less vitriol towards him. Will Tice is the old Cat Williams self-esteem bit. Making entire careers and lives off a single philosophy. Mm -hmm. Spec Op says he had the witches mad at him. You can't mess with the witches now for whatever reason. They ain't got to hide no more. It's not that the witches can't hide no more. That's also part of the psyop. They're, hit, they're hitting them with the reverse psychology. They're bringing witches into the open. Because you got to understand. <laughs> That's a good point, Spec Ops. I ain't even thought about that too much. They're, they're letting the witches come out into the open. Because this this will be the... I already said that. I said this in an old stream, and the brother Pierre brought it to my attention. I said, pretty soon, spell work and witchcraft will be more mainstream than it's been in known human history because of the internet. And then pretty soon you're going to see people trying to sell spell work like they sell beats, like five for $10 and shit. And that actually happened. And the brother Pierre took a screenshot of a story of a sister trying to sell spell work in particular of dark magic. And I don't know if she got any education, she trolling or whatever, but she's going to get fucked up if people do that. But anyway, irregardless of the consequences, it's happening. So now it seems like, okay, well, if they do claim Kevin Samuels, right, they're going to bring the attention on them of the feds. But the magical feds, not the regular feds. I'm talking about like Princeton. I'm talking about like parapsych parapsychology, parapsychology unit of investigators. Because, yeah, the news and Atlanta PD and all these people would be like, closed case, he died of a heart attack. He was 57. We'll memorialize him and his polarity. Whatever. Good riddance. But the people on social media putting out that energy like, yo, this is a message to any man who crosses us. They run the risk of becoming targeted individuals. But that seems to me from a war mind state, which is more of a man thing, that seems like that's the point. So, like, if we if we change the color of this conversation, let's do it that way. Let's do an ill-ass hypothetical. Let's say, hypothetically, several of these men in recent time have died of suspicious reasons that are never fleshed out completely because there's a third-party, magical, spiritual root influence. Let's say this has actually been going on much longer than that, but they needed the society to kind of normalize these concepts in order for the discussion to surface. This is classic Cliff High shit. Is when you analyze the language of a subgroup, and then through that language, you're able to broadcast and forecast different prescient events. So if black people through the collective consciousness now have Rod A's and Billy Carson talking about the Anunnaki space connection, we have these brothers talking about black woman is God, and then you have these sisters talking about craft work, matriarchal stuff, and things that we picked up from indigenous timelines. And in the middle, you have the political figures and the Todd Street Bays and the George, Jordan Maxwell's telling you don't forget how you got in this position in contrast to the civilizations you come from and the civilizations you come from were part of an inquisition were part of a witch hunt were part of a magical shutdown remember the templars the rosicrucians and those people and what their roles were and why they disappeared it's because of magic the reason why masonry requires you to take oath is because of magic all this stuff is about magic so now magic is becoming online for more people who've always had it in them because we have common ancestors so if you had a, a a matriarch who is magical and even if you have the white man that raped your grandma and he came from a magical lineage you run the risk of that genetically being in you so just because you had no exposure to it you don't know how magical you are now these people on the internet are making certain things available to you you try it out and it works Neville Goddard for instance that shit works for me don't know how, whatever, it works. So imagine all the other people in disciplines is going, it's working, we're online now. Once we get out of the petty drama of like <laughs> attacking our own people, which is corny by the way, because how come these energies and works are never targeted towards the people who benefit from us destroying ourselves? 
So if that flip, if that switch is flipped, then when those attacks are happening, because people were being cute and clamorous with it hurting each other, that's one level. But then you get the next level who comes in after that. They go, well, this shit works, right? Yeah, it works. How does it work? All right, it works. How come we're not targeting these people? When you get that group of people who actually target people that matter, that actually changes the course of civilization, watch this paranormal group come out of nowhere. Watch. It's going to be on some Space Force shit. I promise you. I promise you. Sure, sure as God made green apples. You're going to have a whole other group or division of some existing agency start talking spooky. And it's not going to make no fucking sense because you're going to remember growing up in a paradigm where all that shit would have been brushed away. Like, ah, oh, that's bullshit. There's no magic. There's no paranormal. There's no spirit work. There's no such thing as this. That shit's all cap. That's all demon shit. That's all, you know, that's all devil shit. Like that whole paradigm we came out of through the 80s and 90s. You're about to see that shit turn around and you can get some white people with glasses and fucking button up shirts telling you, hey, there's a potential that this particular phenomenon on a quantum level is happening based on the intentions of this, 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 and this, and the, the cellular molecular sh uh, structures of these particular plants and these chemicals do this, 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 and this, and this. And with the fucking entanglement of the mind and intention, sending this particular energy or this particular spirit this way causes this, this, and this, and this, and this. And as soon as they fucking start talking like that, the jig is up. I'm telling you, once I figure it out, it's too late. I've said that about everything. If I see a trend, if I see something, I'm already late. I'm, I'm, speak, I'm not speaking forward into time. I'm speaking, I'm, I'm reporting from the past. It's happened already. It's, hap it's, it's about to roll out. Because damn it if that's not all the Netflix TV shows. Damn it if it's not littered in like the top Netflix fucking movies and shit or whatever streaming platform. There's like a pinch of magic in all that shit now. And it's alarming because it's like, it's based on real works. It's not just like someone made up something new. It's based on like history. It's based on like grimoire. Like it's not out of nowhere is what I'm saying. It's not a new idea. It's an old idea. Shit. Making entire careers and lives off a single philosophy. Site says, Kevin provided context for value exchange. Yes, in a transactional society. No one ever likes the guy at the pawn shop counter unless they walk in with a blessing they didn't have to work for. Come on now. Christo says, deep. Robert Atkins says, witches are now called scientists and pharmacists. Pharmikia means sorcery. Think of it. What is the closest that we would call a potion nowadays? Mountain Dew, Dr. Pepper, Snapple. These are all potions. You're talking about on a literal sense, yeah. I mean, alchem. <laughs> Alchemy, chemistry, it's all in the language. There's nothing but magic in our language. That's for damn sure. Our language itself is magical. That's for sure. But I'm not talking about science. There's a difference between science and spirituality. They're not the same. Spirituality is when you're dealing with spirits. Science is when you're dealing with the spirit of physical things. So like, ah, I can't even explain it all the way. Spirituality is something a little different. So let's say all this is under the form of spirituality. If you assume that you are a spirit in a human body. If you imagine your humanity shell, desires, nervous system is a product of the earth or environment. That part of you, which is the physical part, that is the body. That is the animal. It can host different drivers, like a Gundam wing. The main soul or spirit that's attached to it to the cord, you, the driver, is a spirit. So technically, your entire life, as long as you have breath, which is what spirit means, right? Anything with breath has a spirit, or is a spirit. But then you have the two categories. You have the category of dealing with the spirits of, and that's called chemistry. When you're breaking down components to their spirit level. So when you're mixing things together, when you're turning things into alcohols and bases, you're either releasing the spirit of it or you're capturing the spirit of it. And then you're adding it to, you know, you're mixing the spirits of the chemicals or the plants or whatever. This is where you get your potion idea from. That's one side of the equation. But then you have the actual spirits.
or entities. These are the things that people worship. These are the things that people give their sacrifice to. These are the things that people make altars for. These are the things that people channel ancestors with. These are something different. These are the producers of works, meaning they do things in the unseen for that reason, to be unseen. So you, there is no paper trail when you're working with spirits, per se, unless you deal with a spiritual people who are able to target and locate the origin of a spiritual work. And there's plenty of them. They're like Earth's defense uh, brink security system for witchcraft. They're usually offline, though, because the normal populace doesn't really get into this stuff. They always reset it. Like the Rosicrucians in them, like if you read P.B. Randolph's work and his conversations with spirits, not only could he converse with spirits and get their whole life story, but he, he uh, almost on some Solomon shit. Those type of people can talk to spirits, therefore they can get the spiritual tea, if you will. Like, oh, this spirit said that such and such, such and such did a work to take out the president. That's all you need. And then whoop, 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 they send them boys to your door and they don't get you for another reason because they can't prove it on a spiritual entity level, but they're still going to deal with it like it's a real threat. It doesn't matter. They don't need a reason for it because they've sworn off of that. But if you're doing it, you're in violation. And that's why everything's oafed up. The oath is a way of tracking who gets access to this stuff. Joining the club, joining, joining a fraternity, joining a lodge that has a magical angle. This is their census. For everyone else, there's MasterCard. And there's a lot of people starting to use their MasterCard for this unseen work. That's what I'm talking about. The spirits of chemicals and alcohol creation and you know manipulation and murdering of people through foreign agents. That's, you know, that's one plus one. Right here, I'm talking about one times one. Is it one or is it two? One times one. If you take two ones and you multiply them together, do you have two ones or do you have one one? That's, that's, that's spiritual work. Bright was a good one talking about that. You're right up, B Maverick. Spec Ops says, all Kev was doing was saying witchcraft don't work. And we see that, yes, it does. I didn't know he was talking about witchcraft. So that opens a very interesting layer to Kev. Kev. He said it didn't work. So when he randomly dies, people are shook because obviously it works because he died. He, I mean, I guess in, we're in a universe where more than one thing can be true. It could not work. And he could still be dead at the same time for a totally different reason. And they could have had a bad hip. We don't know. The only people that know, that's what I'm saying. The problem isn't whether witchcraft killed him or not at this point. Because if he was an icon, you think of it like a Trojan horse. Think of it like that. Think of it on a spiritual level that he's a Trojan horse, right? He's the person that the spirit world or that group of types of people they're going to use him in his, his light or his polarity, because he's a polarizing character, right? They're going to use his polarization to draw out this narrative. Man, these niggas playing chess, not checkers. Because if he was really killed by witches because he said witchcraft doesn't work, and it, it was them flexing, but I don't know who do you prove it to at that point, because the general consensus isn't about witchcraft. The general consensus is about this man died randomly doing what he loves, but he said some fucked up things that hurt certain people's feelings. Yeah, the witchcraft part is a, a subtone layer. So they're going to end up drawing themselves out. If they really did that to him, they're going to draw themselves out. And then it's lights out for everybody. We don't, we don't need an inquisition in the middle of the ending of another inquisition I would like to have an inquisition-free motherfucking century. Is that okay? Can we gain agreement on that? Will Ty says the universe is allowing everything to science within their individual knowing understanding. Kai Robinson, peace, brother. Rob Atkins says, I was listening to stuff on the jinn. Some would compare them to demons. In Islamic lore, they are interesting in the fact that they can eat, have sex, and die. So that doesn't sound like a spiritual entity. 
Some people suggest that the jinn were the first form of creations made out of the fire. So they're fire beings that are physical in the sense that they do things that humans do. So the best depiction of a jinn is genie from Aladdin, where he's this blue smoke, this blue f uh, flame type of being who's able to shapeshift. That's a jinn, genie. And if you remember, Aladdin takes place in Asia slash Mongolia. So this is the solemn, it's the Suleiman story, not a East Indian or a, it's not an Indian story. It's not a, a, a um, Iranian, Iraqi historian. It's a Genghis Khan story because Genghis Khan is a fucking Muslim. I'm tired of them fucking playing with us. Genghis Khan, Solomon, all of that Mon, Pokemon. That all comes from the same region that the story of Aladdin comes from, that the story of the Jinn come from, because it's the same fucking person. So Aladdin and Genie, that's Solomon and the Jinn. That's it. It don't go no further than that. And as the brother is pointing out, it's curious that some people who are aware of elementals or aware of spirits are interacting with Jinn. Lauren Hill told you that. Sleeping with this Jinn or something, something like it's a trend. Let me break it down for you again. She said a whole bunch of shit real fast in those three bars. What's up, Ab McCree? I see you. I see you out there pimping. Ab McCree, they, the, the ladies on timeline saying your godfather died, bro. They said they don't like that men are crying that Kevin Samuels died. They said they acting like he was a surrogate stepdaddy to y'all. Atlanta, react. DJ Georgie Porgy said, Dr. Strange new movie is the blueprint to conquer. Everything is there. The amount of jewels in it is amazing. Robert Atkins says, the gen sounds like an interdimensional being. But so do humans. Because where the hell do you go when you go to sleep? Giselle Mahone, Bohemian Grove, which was recently sold. Very curious. Spec Ops says, the reaction from witches is the proof. Yeah, we got better spiritual generals this time, though. I'm sure we will do better in this Inquisition. As long as the witches don't mess it up. Because if we're, this, if we're this close to understanding our magical history or our connection to a different reality that was stolen away from us, and we're just using it to destroy each other, then we're going to lose. But if something happens, if there's a quick pole switch, just a few degrees, I think what in astrology is just three degrees. If we just take that attention and shift it just three degrees, we can see the finish line and do a creative work together to reset the reality in the sense of the paradigm of what we're trying to do as humans. Right now, all this stuff is selfish. Like, what can I get out of it? Where's my love? Where's my money? Where's my materials? Then you need certain people to come in who master this and wield this at a higher level to be like, but what about my family? What about my community? What about my country? I'm back on some patriarch, pa pa patriarchal type wave. So if there's witches... Then there's warlocks, because you have to have both represented, right? If the divine feminine that's able to access this energy is claiming responsibility for this, then there's going to be a response from the divine masculine side that also deals in this. That's what I'm saying. You have to be careful because the Inquisition wasn't handled by regular men. The Inquisition was handled by Templars. These are people who wielded magic their damn selves. It's black on black crime. So what if Kev, because Kev, Kev, Kev Samuels was in a, a frat, right? If he was in a frat, then there's a high propensity that he was a Mason, right? So if he was in a frat, which he was, and if he was a Mason, which it seems like he was, then that just rung an alarm in his chapter, in, in his halls, in his lodges. You can't do that. And get away with it. You see what I'm saying? This is something totally different. He is, a, he is a targeted individual. He's a higher target. He's not me. He's not like somebody in a fucking manosphere that just says dumb shit and gets 200 views. He has brothers. Come on now. That's a, that's a declaration of war. This is fucking Chris. Nigga, this has the propensity to be the motherfucking Christmas addicts, nigga, on the witchcraft side of things. If they shot my man Kev Samuels in the back and he was affiliated, you're going to hear a whole bunch of energy swing back to the women. So, whoever his... Hmm. Spec Ops, what you would have to find is 
who is Kev Samuel's counterpart energy wise in a feminine or physical or masculine body? It could even just be a male figure who counters all his points, but of the same energy, of the same repute. And I don't know who that is per se. But whoever was rivaling him on a narrative front, it could be a female too. But I would keep, I'll put them niggas on high alert. Because that's, that's why I tell you, keep your hands clean. If that's true, if they took credit for that, they, they, you don't understand, bro. <laughs> Yo, that's a wild, that's a wild, I don't even want to think about that no more. It's, it's going to be a wild summer. That's what you've been doing, brother. It's working, and that's why I bothered you. Yeah, that is exactly why this bothers me. Because it smells, it smells dirty. It smells hidden. It doesn't smell like a, a young, a young old man like him should die of a heart issue. With all the fanfare that's around it, I've been in situations where I've seen negative energy warp reality. So that's what's happening. We're in a time warp surrounding this moment where all the noise, it don't even make sense. The narratives don't even make sense. That's some Tower of Babel shit. So someone set off a bomb spiritually. And then those of us who are kind of like uh, grandfathered into the fuckery, <laughs> what do they say? I, I sense that there's some fuckery afoot. I do. There's some fuckery afoot bigger than Kev, though. Kev is just a catalyst for the conversation. But I've been, like you, like Spec Ops said, I, I brought this conversation to light a couple months ago. Damn. The turnaround on that is ass, by the way. I don't like speaking on this stuff and then it animates that way. Like, like fucking the call and response is fucking ridiculous. I guess that's why I'm very unnerved by his death. Because if it's true, because if it was witchcraft, it's exactly what the fuck I've been talking about. If he was killed by work, bro, that's bad news. There's nothing good about his death. There's nothing good about it. There's Listen, <laughs> what do they say on that fucking, uh, that old scary movie trailer? You're all going to die down here. Like, you can't do that. You can't throw a stone, kill a man that's obviously connected, and then brag about it. As if there's no one out there that loves him. That's crazy. You gotta that that's like this what do they call the code of the jungle, street law. It's the same, it's the same, it's the same rules apply. If not, it's even scarier though. LeVar Bennett says Kev Samuels had cancer though, so he was already effed up. That's crazy. Pariah King says, Sheesh, it's been a while. Nice to see you, MG. Nice to see you. Thank you for jumping in. We're trying to figure out whether or not Kev Samuels was killed by witchcraft. Huh. Okay. Let's do it. Beretta Scott, Kevin Samuels dead, question mark. The hood witches did they thing with this one, huh? I never watched Kevin Samuels. I never got into his platform, so I really don't have an opinion. But rejoicing in his death does seem odd. Some of y'all are given the munchkin land from the Wizard of Oz. They celebrated the death of the wicked witch. May 7th, can the witches who took care of Samuel, Kevin Samuels, get her out of here? So these are men pandering for women's attention for disagreeing with Kevin Samuels. Okay. That's always a weird energy, but I appreciate it. We need some polarity. The same fucking 
I'm not going to read this out loud. The same feminists that openly rejoice at the death of Kevin Samuels are saying it was misogynistic to laugh at evil witch Amber because she shed a few tears. So this is more polarity. Black women market value has truly tanked after Kevin Samuels' death. We literally saw in real time the mass celebration of a black man's death. I don't know who's more sinister, the KKK or the sick, twisted witches in our own families. So check this out linguistically. He's not talking about witchcraft or witches, but he's referring to that spirit as a witch-like spirit. So instead of calling them the B word or instead of calling them sisters, he called them witches because only a witch would celebrate a black man's death. And that's a more deeper, more poignant opinion because what he's speaking to is the RGB black power movement from his perspective. He's saying, how are you black power and pro-black families, but you're celebrating the death of a black man? AKA you're off code, as Tariq Nasheed would say. So they're using a lot of Wizard of Oz references, which on its own mean nothing. But this is the second Wizard of Oz reference that we just seen within a few tweets. So that's going to harken the subconscious mind. If you do this like a word cloud and you see Wizard of Oz pop up more than once, it's the universe or human's ability to leak clues uh, however the cluster of our neurons and our collective mind works because if people keep saying that it's a witch hunt wizard of oz people are celebrating like the witch is dead the witch is dead then you got to really look at that in a different lens on some dick gregory shit they're saying the witch is dead they didn't say the witch they're not huh they're saying kevin samuels was a witch And that makes sense because the only way work that kills you can work is if your hands are dirty. So let me let me backtrack a few a few lessons. I get it now. Kevin Samuels was a witch. And that's why he said witchcraft doesn't work. Got it. The witch is dead. Kevin Samuels was the witch. And the reason why if 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 there was work done and it attacked him and killed him, that means his hands was dirty. And the only way you can do your hand, your hands can be dirty to where you could be um, a target like that. And it works, you know, no spirit guide intervention, no guardian angels, no Jesus, no Allah, none of that saying, fuck out of here. This is mine. Mine is as clean. If no one was there to say, hey, he's clean and it got him like that, then that means he was doing something. And unfortunately, people are basic. It's not his talking points that he was doing wrong. It was something that he probably did behind the scenes. Probably something he did to get the attention that he got. Probably something that he did in a whole different unrelated situation that would have caused him to have the opening spiritually to be attacked spiritually. So when we look at the linguistics of strangers and random blurbs on the internet and you see this reoccurring theme that they're treating him like he was the wicked witch and we're talking about it in the subject of witchcraft, then yeah, he was. God damn. That's right. You can't touch you can't touch people who are clean. Unless you like break a few universal laws. The wicked witch, I mean Kevin Samuels is dead. So witches band together and put an end to Kevin Samuels and not black oppression. Roe versus Wade hashtag. See? That's that polarity and duality I was talking about. Kevin Samuels getting treated like the wicked witch of the West. Black women acting like what happened to Kevin Samuels doesn't happen to 100 people in this world. We all die, so come off your high horses and stop being witches. There it is again. What is wrong with y'all? Hate Kevin Samuels, but loves the woman that used to get men high and rob them. Cardi B, shut up. What's crazy is this my first thought. Some witch got sick of Kevin Samuels' mouth and decided to try to put a new spell she learned. Laughing face, the temptress of Waikiki. So usually if a person's um, sick of someone talking, they'll do a shut up spell. They didn't do a shut up spell, they killed him. Kevin Samuels called women over 35 leftovers and in less than a week, he became a bag of bones. Which priestess is responsible? So this is the first one I saw. Which, you mean the other word, right? Oh, bitches is witches. 
Looks like it worked. What's crazy is you probably shake George Zimmerman's hand. So there goes that dichotomy. You putting emojis and stuff for your own people, but not against the people that actually hurt you and get away with it. A lot of these hoes be witches now as a days. So there goes the bitches as witches narrative showing up unrelated. I would not be surprised if witchcraft was used on Kevin Samuels. The way he died is all of a sudden, I know one of these voodoo witches turned that man into a hamster. In Africa, we celebrate when bad witches die. Check it out now. The way I see black women celebrating this Samuel's death is very telling that he was looked as a witch. Obviously, so unfortunately, them celebrating isn't a bad thing. It's in the Bible for the Christians. So that was codified on three levels. She called y'all stupid Christians, but I ain't, I ain't gonna tell nobody. Dude died and people rejoice like the big bad witch is dead. Oh yeah, this is a thing. Kimmy Samuel's passing is the work of some powerful witches. I'm sure the witches are celebrating by a bonfire as we speak. Kevin Samuels was a rude bitch that liked to decrade people but hide behind saying he's just trying to be helpful. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Okay. Rest in peace, Kevin Samuels. I didn't agree with everything, but now that I see witches mocking you, I will make sure to embody everything you taught men to the fullest. So that's one, one of the um, polarities I was telling you about. His name is Opinionated Mike, which is hilarious, right? He's saying, I, I don't fully support this Opinionated Brother originally, but because witches are celebrating it, now I'm going to lean into it further. So, that, so death has two polarities. You had the death where everyone celebrates, and then you had the death when everyone mourns. And the people that mourn are going to go even harder. So we could run the risk of him turning into a martyr for the manosphere. When that happens, and then the manosphere gets a hold of this bitches as witches narrative, it's going to go bad real fast because it's going to start as a joke. It's going to start as like a little, you know, people just saying shit, no one really paying attention. And then men are going to be like, wait, what? Women can do spells to kill us? And then you had to look at your family. It's like, damn, how come all of our grandmothers live, but our grandfathers died so early? Then you start looking and you start putting that fucking puzzle together. Like, damn, he only got food from grandma's house. He was kind of problematic, though. So I guess he got what was coming to him from all that alcohol he was drinking. Oh, we in the rabbit hole, family. We in the rabbit, rabbit hole. <laughs> we are not in a good space right now. Black women are the most disrespected people on this earth, and we're tired of it. Don't tell us how to disrespect with the disrespect we're handed every day. Kevin Samuels, fuck him, the wicked witch. I don't know if Kevin Samuels was oppressing her, though. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that. Because I hear women say fly shit about men all the time, and I'd be like, couldn't be. She ain't talking to me, though. Goddamn, like, shit, she don't live in my shoes. Like, what the fuck? She have her opinion. Like, she'll find her man. She'll find her king. It ain't got nothing to do with me. But they take this personally. No lie. All day, the damn Wizard of Oz song has been playing in my head. Ding dong, the witch is dead. That song just won't leave my head. Because you're getting a damn download, bro. Because you, you tapped into the fucking NPC wave. Mm. Remember when I was telling y'all bitches is witches? But remember I said bitches is witches, but niggas are too. Kevin Samuels. One less human for me to worry about. Ursula the Sea Witch. Oh, we getting deep and dirty in this. I feel like spiritual women played a part. And notice the word feel. They don't think, they can't prove, they're not using logic. These are all just feelings and thoughts. So the witches cast the spells to kill seven, Kevin Samuels, but none of our oppressors? I guess that makes sense if you think about it. That's a woman saying that. Kevin Samuels was the equivalent to Hitler. Y'all forget the Holocaust started with one opinion. 
So duh, we're going to throw a party when the Wicked Witch of the South is gone. So he's the Wicked Witch of the South. Okay. Either the CIA or a Hex. Well, I know the CIA is tired of niggas bringing them into everything. I don't think real Candace O death will be celebrated as much as Kevin Samuels. And that witch is toxic. Why do they think Candace Owens is a witch? Scarlet Witch needed Kevin Samuels in Avenger form. Delusional for real. If witches killed Kevin with their voodoo, they need to be in jail. There we go. Inquisition language. There it is. It starts with an idea and a silly thought, but that shit, because of the nature of humanity in our minds and our collective, this will become a... No. This has the potential to become a real narrative later. Right now, it's just a few people on Twitter, my video, and maybe a few other videos, because I'm sure there's videos about this. I didn't watch him because I'm like, I wasn't going to talk about him because I didn't watch him. I didn't agree with... I, I understand I live in a transactional society, but I don't agree with that. I think people have intrinsic value on our spiritual paths, and they have a greater value in our memories and the basis of our codes for how we're going to do our missions. So I don't think all of that should be transactional or at least not mathematically transactional, the way that Kevin Samuels broke things down. But in his world, he was right. And the thing is, we all don't live in the same world. We all don't seek the same things. He was saying, if you seek this, then these type of people expect this. If you're talking like this, then you should be able to show that. People didn't want to see that mirror. Like, like your boy on the wire said, you wanted it to be one way, but it's the other way. And that, that's who fucking Kevin Samuels was. He's fucking Marlo. Shaking up the paradigm, saying, hey, y'all niggas say y'all want this. Y'all chicks say y'all want that. How come you ain't putting up then? How come you're not putting your bid in on this level? You want someone at this level? Raise yourself up to that level. Like, how is that bad advice? Because he's insulting? Nigga, nothing's more insulting than working on your grandmother's land for a job with money that was based on your gold buying houses that belong to you. Young McFly TV. What's good, bro? No one knows says, life that MF up while you talk that. My grandma died before my granddad. It happens. It happens. It happens the other way. I'm just talking about the unequal balance of grandmothers outliving grandfathers by 30 or more years. No one's paying attention. I was very new to his content, but he shouted out the FBI and CIA occasionally. Jokingly, I assumed they were following listening, because they are. I mean, think about it. If you became an FBI or CIA agent, what are you going to do in your downtime? Try to get bitches and get money. Like, it don't change because you have a fancy job. And if you try to get bitches and get money you pro and you're black, you're probably going to find Kevin Samuels. Shit, you know the ungodly amount of naval intelligence that watched me make beats? I've had like three brothers come out in 2017, 18 and say, yo, bro, we fuck with you heavy out here on the ship because I was like, which ship are you talking about? the USSS, whatever the fuck it is. And he was like, yeah, we got fucking three big screens on when you start talking that shit while we doing our jobs for America in the fucking ocean. And I'm like, oh shit. That's the last, I, the last thing I needed was Uncle Sam to watch my ass talk crazy about the reptilians. I ain't got time for it. <laughs> I ain't got time for the shit. We got, we got the smoke from the women. I don't have time for smoke from reptilians. I don't have time for smoke from Uncle Sam. I don't have time for smoke for the craft that follow me. I don't have time for the shape-shifting animals that come up to me. I don't have time. Like, dog, I want to make beats and make money and, and legalize weed in the South. Like, there's certain things in my priority list that gets to catch and smoke with these niggas. But I can't control that. They're here. DJ Georgie Porgy says, Can you please explain polarity versus duality? As polarity implies extremes connected, but they're the opposite. Duality refers to the same thing, but the connection is not ageist against each other. Ooh. 
You broke it down already. I would say it in this way, the way my brain understands it. Polarity suggests that you could pick a side of something, that something has at least two sides. And the way that you view, operate, or speak out of, you're going to choose one or the other and all the gradients in between. So polarity is, ex is expressing black, white, and gray and where you fall in the gray matter. If you fall in the gray matter leaning towards the darkness, you're, you're considered dark. If you fall in the gray matter um, towards the light, you're considered light. Duality suggests that in order for there to be light, there must be darkness. And in order for both of them to operate, you need a little bit of each and both. So even when you're going light, there's some darkness you're going to find. Even when you're going dark, there's a light you're going to find. So they're describing a similar phenomenon but the science that you apply after that, I guess, is what makes some difference. So when we say like the law of polarity, but they have a different perspective, although the mutual focus is the same. Well, I think that's bad. Well, I think that's good. Well, I think that's disrespectful. Well, I think that's not disrespectful. That's polarity at work. Duality at work is more like the person that's helping your community also has a dark side or perversion. And you'd be like, well, he's a man. He's, it's duality. You think a man with that much good attributes doesn't have nothing bad about him? That's how people normally use duality, saying that two things are happening at the same time that are opposing each other. Polarity is just the scale, I guess. With all that's coming out, I'm pretty sure which put roots on Kevin Samuels. Now, which one of you witches or wizards put a spell on Kevin Samuels moments prior to his untimely death? Well, if it's a death to kill him, it wasn't moments. They've been working on it for a while. I think a witch. I feel like a witch. See, this I feel like this is psychic uh, leaks. Which one of you witches killed Kevin Samuels? I know y'all brewed something. Y'all going to leave these witches alone. I don't know which one of you witches did that. You're rejoicing. He used to say on a channel, you're a witch. Even in death, he's still winning. Look at all the energies folks are celebrating his death. Wizard of Oz, Wizard of Oz. Big evil witches. Witch over 35 got pissed and a hold of him. I think a witch put a spell. See that I think and I feel shit? Yeah, bro. I never did this. I wasn't going to, I didn't want to look at it like that because that's too cliche. But this universe is like a fucking cartoon, ain't it? Ding dong, the witch is dead. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Kevin Samuels died. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Okay. Kevin Samuels was a witch. Uh-huh. Because only someone with dirty hands could get dirty magic, right? That, at least that's what they tell you. I still, I'm still out to lunch on that. I think niggas could do whatever the fuck they want. They just have to pay the price for it. And whatever the price for killing someone is. Yeah, I would have to go about proving he's a witch somehow. Or connected or affiliated with witches. But he wouldn't be a witch if he's a male. Born male. He would be a warlock. Or similar. He represented patriarchy, which is bad news. Allegedly. Which fraternity was he part of? I could find out. Get in because uh, back when I pledged, like it or not, there was a GPA limit. You had to make a certain GPA. You had to have letters of recommendation. You couldn't be a baby mama. You couldn't be an ugly chick. See, you had to have some style, some, 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 
You had to be able to be a benefit. So why are people mad? Well, I'll tell you, whenever there's a separation, Mr. O, between the haves and have nots, there's always going to be a problem. Polarity. On the yard, as we would call it. See, I was going to try to come in and just talk about it from a from a high level. But, you know, niggas always want to come in and go straight to the mud. So, why original? Why you done went quiet? Oh, I don't need to see no more. Yeah, he's on it. He's on it. He was hiding himself in plain sight. You could tell by his background, his essential oils and stuff. Um, I don't know if he has other views of his other rooms and his houses, but I'm sure we could play a game of Where's Waldo. And he's picked up all these little things that you get from being privy, aware, or conditioned into a paradigm of materials that are associated with the craft. Now, that doesn't mean these materials necessarily mean you're evil or that you're a witch or that it's something negative. It's just saying that you got three essential oils right there. And whatever these are infused with. And he's about to tell you, you heard what he said, right? He said, I wanted to have the conversation up here, but niggas always want to go into the mud. So now he's about to be, he's code switching. So he's intelligent. He knows that he can speak at two different vibrations and he'll lose people up here when he explains to you what it takes to be part of the society that he's part of. Now, if you do it through that filter and you understand what he just said, he said, back in my day, you had to have some type of thing about you you had to be good looking. You had to be able to offer something to the community you're joining. You couldn't be a baby mama. You couldn't be ugly. You couldn't be this. You had to be intelligent. So this is like very boule, black, Greek type of energy. So I didn't know that about him prior to this video. So knowing that about him, then seeing how he talks, it makes sense. He comes from that cloth. He comes from that agenda where you met the Jack and Jill Foundation. He comes from pairing people at the highest rings of society together to produce fruit that are stronger, similar to how lions do. That's the whole mentality he's operating from. And if you don't come from that society, if you don't come from a lineage like that, you wouldn't understand it. Because how could you? We live in a paradigm where you can just hook up with anybody. They couldn't, is what he was telling you. His, his, his first peer group are people who are already quote unquote black elitist. He was a black elitist. That's there's nothing new under the sun with that one. Say hello to Jesse Jackson and Bill Cosby for me. But now we gotta prove that Kappa Alpha Psi somehow is connected to masonry. If we can get Kappa Alpha Psi, if we can get masonry, then I can get magic. That's it. It don't go no further than that. And I'm about to find out in two tweaks. He says that he was gay. He found someone in the bed, meaning he was a witch. Uh-oh. If that's true, we got a problem. Because, you know, the gay part doesn't really surprise me. Or the secretly gay part. That's like that whole, like, matter of fact, almost all your famous, matter of fact, I don't want to say it like this, but I'm going to say it like this. All of your famous black men who are associated with a fraternity, there's always this gay narrative about them we don't got to say nobody's names because we don't need to disrespect nobody but it's common so that's why that doesn't surprise me like they do that to all of them whether it's true or not i can't speak on if you do like atlanta kappa parties youtube you'll see a whole bunch of gay people suggesting this is a reality but i'm not that deep into it i need to make the masonic connection though kappa alpha psi is historically african-american since 1911 indiana indiana on the old maps was near Mecca. Indiana, Bloomington, Pennsylvania, headquarters in Pennsylvania. Ah, oh, that's all I needed. Their headquarters is in PA, the Masonic capital of the United States. I ain't got time. Hold up. Uh, Google Earth. Oh, we about to find out today. We about to find out today. Let me see what that building is decorated like. And it's a wrap.
Why, 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 why my browser acting like I got a Windows 95 computer? If you don't ever play me like that, you know damn well my computer can handle this. All right, hold up. How we do that thing in Google? So he's in Philly. 2322 North Broad Street. Hmm. He's a musician too? Was he a musician? Aw oh, hell. If he was a musician, he was a magician. Nah, they they're in a raggedy building. If this is it. Nah, nah, never mind. Hold up. Aw oh, hell, here we go. Here it goes, goddamn an abandoned, an abandoned John. Okay, so that so imagine this a hundred years ago. This would have been a thing that's not fucking graffitied on, that's for sure. Let me keep going down the street. What are these row houses? Oh shit! Here we go. Row houses. Kappa Alpha Psi headquarters across the street from the interesting building. What kind of flags they got? Yeah. Yeah. Victorians, yeah. Alfonso, it's a funeral home. Cut it the fuck out. That is someone's mansion, dog. Yeah. So black people used to be live lavish on the street, obviously. Where's Moore Street in Philly? It's on the other side of the town. Okay. I was about to say, did they put all the black headquarters on Moore Street or near Moore Street? They didn't. So he's on the other side of that. That's the demarcation line. The Philadelphia's Magic Gardens. You couldn't make you couldn't make this shit up if I wanted to. You can't make this shit up if you wanted to. Philadelphia's Magic Gardens. I ain't got time, cuz. What kind of building is next to this bullshit? Uh-huh. They got the diamond field here. Okay. So the energy's going this way. It comes to a point here. Uh-huh. Okay, Benjamin Banneker. Just follow the diamonds. There's another one. Oh, my God. This shit is too predictable. Son, it ain't no way. It ain't no way an N.A. education nigga like me can see the fucking Scooby Snacks on the goddamn map. Oh, these niggas. These niggas. Come on now. <laughs> this shit is so fucking predictable. Oh, my God. But it makes sense. It's, it's, it's got dang on Philly. Philly is like the motherland. It's like the capital of the U.S. corporation. Remember, it was in Philadelphia that the Liberty Bell was cracked and all that shit. So it's going to have a large amount of evidence of the fuckery that's afoot. But as it pertains to whether or not Kevin Samuels was a magician, I don't think I can prove that with, uh, what is this called? What, kind, what is this evidence called? It's called uh, circumstantial evidence. It's not even circumstantial. It's like a whole bunch of conjecture. But when I follow this Jefferson Square, this is a Masonic Square, and you follow the baseball diamonds, which you know are Masonic, and you follow them, and they're in rows with each other. They're, they're cross they're cross hatching each other. And then you have another one where the energy is going the other way, right? And then you just see the parks that it coincides with. This one, there's a park there, and it's going to be a mason at every corner. Mm -hmm. That one ends at the Veterans Hospital. Next to a magical fucking garden. There's a dog park here. Some, this disturbed the pattern, whatever this is. So whoever paid for that paid a lot for it. Keep going. There's another park. The Lutheran Church Park. 
down to the Stephen Garrard Park and the the Grand Music Academy, Garrard Academy of Music. And this is some type of a, is this a waste site or power site? That's just huge. This whole little island or peninsula. So yeah, so we got the Kappas in Philly. They're Masons. You say Kevin was Alpha, not Kappa? So Kappa Alpha Psi is still Alpha? You sure? They say Kevin Samuels is in Kappa Alpha Psi, Omega Chapter, 45th anniversary. Alpha Phi Alpha says, congratulations to our brother Kevin Samuels. Recent promotion to Lieutenant Commander, but is that him or another Kevin Samuels? Yeah, it's a different Kevin Samuels than Alpha. They said he was dating a Kappa Alpha Psi man. Nothing is coincidental when it comes to magic. Signs and symbols are intentional. Robert Atkins. Yes, sir. Bobby E. Kevin was an Alpha, not Kappa. How can I find that Bobby E? How can I verify which one he is? Young McFly says, follow the diamonds. DJ George Reporter says, we can't talk about Will Smith like that. Oh, <laughs> we might be able to though. Cause look at his career. If that's not magical, I don't know what is. There is a video claiming that Samuels was a Freemason. He, he, of course, you don't get to his level and fucking stature without it. Like, for quote unquote black people, like frats to the Masonic pipeline is like motherfucking having bacon, egg, and cheese sandwiches on a Saturday morning. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing, though. I'm just saying, like, this certain, they have a certain way about them. That boule energy, that fucking elite black uh, attitude and standard is they're just they're just like that, for better or for worse. You can you can agree to disagree on their principles, but they are all the same way. They're all the same way. What was the cause of death? Um, a heart attack allegedly. It's insinuated that he was having sex with a woman that was thirty two years old, and he died on top of her. He had just met her the night prior. Here it is right here, uh, brother Bobby E. Kevin Samuels, CIMCIP. He's associated with the Kappas. Where does it say that in the article, though? Groups and organizations. We need to join to get his full profile, but it says it right here. Activities and societies, Kappa Alpha Psi. And she was a nurse, Robert Atkins. Exactly. She could have had anything that could induce a heart attack. But if he was, so if the nurse did something medical to induce a heart attack, then it's not witchcraft. It's murder. Okay. My noop frat brother passed away. Let's celebrate. Exactly, Stephen. Stephen Day. No disrespect. Stephen, are you a moderator? If you're not a moderator, let me know, Stephen, so I can make you one. Stephen Day. 
The chat says he was in good health. This is sudden and shocking. Let's see if Bitches is Witches shows up here. Yeah, he's a Kappa, bro. Kappa Alpha Psi. Yeah, okay. That's all I needed. But you can look at, you can do a deep dive if you want to. I don't need to. I just need to know if the Kappa is, is a pipeline to masonry. Because an overachiever would overachieve, right? The Masonic and Kappa Alpha Phi fraternity brothers in 2007. So they've known to do things together. This is Sacramento's history. Oh, that's it, folks. They got the Masonic license plates for Kappas. Oh, it's a wrap. 1911 Mason. Yes, sir. So now, oh yes, yes sir, yes sir. They're associated with masonry. I bet you a mason founded them. Let's find out. How do I, I need another tab? Kappa Alpha Psi. Because they call the founding fathers of America founders, right? And all founders of all countries are masons, right? These are all post-reconstruction babies. They're all born right after reconstruction. Lees, Irvins, Blakemores, Edmonds. I'm an Edmonds. Ashers, Alexanders, Armstrong, Diggs, Grant. How would I pin the tail on the Mason, though? First Negroes officer training, so they're military. If they're military, there's an oath there. If they're capital, there's an oath there. He created the coat of arms. The Greek heraldic mythology. He's a Mason. Crown Hill Cemetery, Indianapolis. There we go. He was a member of the Central Lodge Number 1 Indianapolis. You can't make this shit up. You can't make this shit up. I didn't need I didn't need that. But I got it. Let's talk about it. He's a fuck these are Masons, dog. <laughs> Masons create fraternities. Let's let's be let's be very clear. Look at that old mud flood head ass building. Of course. Naturally. 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 Yeah, they're Masons. Okay. So now you just got to connect Kevin Samuels to a frat to the propensity that he'll turn into masonry, to propensity that he be so prolific at masonry that he'll learn magic. Famous Prince Hall Masons, which ties it to the earlier conversation where we we're talking about motherfucking Benjamin Maneker and who other than Ezra Alexander, a founder of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity. He's a famous Prince Hall Mason. It, it, don't, go, it don't go no further it can't go further than this. And that's a totally different brother. Bishop of the AME Church, the first bishop of the AME Church, African Lodge 459. The singer from the Manhattans, which have great samples, by the way. He's the lead singer. He's the one that, in the, matter of fact, in my new sample pack, um, Crate Chop Volume 2, he's featured in that. But that's the guy right there. Ezra Alexander. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's all I needed. That's all I needed to know from my rabbit hole journey. I'm already doing too much. So now I got to connect masonry to motherfucking magic. Okay.
Can I do it? Do I have the spirit with me that can show me the way? <laughs> Young McFly says, fraternities are like the G League for Freemasonry. Yes, sir. Bobby E says, Kevin mentioned it in one of his videos. Maybe he said, I don't know. You have to find that video, bro, because it could be a Mandela effect. So far, all we're finding is connections to Kappas and a Kappa brother claiming him. But if you say he's an alpha, alpha is also, I mean, if Kappas are Freemasons, you know damn well the alphas are Freemasons. Alphas and Freemasons are like fucking bacon and eggs, dog. Like, <laughs> for fraternity. Plus masonry. that They're like the first seats. The best of both worlds. A Mason Alpha. <laughs> ah. Masonic and other fraternal ties. Many brothers have questioned whether or not the founders were Masons or members of other lodges. My research has found documentation that Jules Robert Harold Ogley and George Biddle Kelly were. That's it. It don't go no further than that. It's also speculated, though not documented at the time, that Chapman, Tandy, and Calls may also have been through circumstantial evidence. Let me deal with each one. The four of them, Jules, Kelly, Callis, Chapman, and Tandy, served at the first initiation committee. Kelly and Callis both worked in the white fraternity houses at Cornell and was privy to the secret documents shared to them by the members of Sigma Alpha Epsilon and Beta Theta Frats. Their research combined with Tandy and Chapman participation helped them to constitute the first ritual. Know that the ritual changed over the years, so that's magic. Later brothers such as Eugene, Roscoe, and others. If you recall, Jones rewrote the ritual by memory. In my research, I rely on primary and secondary source material for documentation. To affirm their Masonic affiliation, sources such as their biography, obituary, or funeral program would have indicated such ties. As I have stated in obituaries for Callis, Chapman, Jones, Murray, and Tandy, there is no mentions of them being a member of a lodge or any fraternal rites done at the funeral. If a brother has other documentation, please let me know. And that's the thing, too. One of my own boys, his uh, grandfather died, and he didn't have a Masonic funeral. But after the funeral, his Masonic brothers came to the house. And they were upset that they didn't get notified that this grandfather's health was failing. Why did the hall in Ithaca, where the first initiation ceremony was held, have three names? Answer, in Ithaca, the hall served three different organizations. The Ithaca Chapter of the Prince Hall Freemasons, the Grand United Order of Odd Fellows, and the Red Men's Lodge. And this is all from the Alpha Fraternity. So now we have to figure out if the Odd Fellows are the magicians. And I bet you they are. This is jurisdiction of the Grand United Order of Odd Fellows, Jamaica, Canada, South America. Principally included African Americans due to black people being discriminated against as a norm of fraternal orders during the 17 and 1800s. So this was found in 1843, fresh off the Civil War. Allegedly. Grand United Order of Oddfellows. It's two fraternal orders, patriotic order and ancient order. So the ancient order is a magical order. Anytime they invoke ancient, they're talking about magic. Oddfellows and magic. Let's do that one. Baby, listen to me, darling. Ooh. The Odd Fellows Primer is cut from the same cloth as the great 19th century manuals written by luminaries, designed to give the initiate everything they need to practice and live Odd Fellowship in the Lodge and beyond the Lodge. This comprehensive work explores and explains concepts of fraternalism and parliamentary procedures in the deeper spiritual. There we go. An ethical facets of the ancient tr and venerable tradition. So the deeper meaning, aka the magical meanings. Do we got reviews?
the meaning and the symbols in this book, new illustrations. This will surely go as one of the most complete works of the operations of Oddfellow Lodge. Covers the workings of the local lodge, Grand Lodge, and the Sovereign Grand Lodge. So there's three orders to masonry. A wonderful reference source for Oddfellows. A wonderful informative text with good illustrations. The amount of knowledge, fundamental guidance, and reputable sources makes this a modern day treasure. Excellent primer. History, philosophy, and tradition. Very fascinating, very fascinating read into one of the true fraternal organizations in the world of the IOOF. Okay. It don't go no further than that. It is what it is. Rites of initiation, secret grips, and secret passwords. Regalia and closed ritual meanings. Hmm. The Templar's role during Inquisition, what was it? The Knights Templar was a large organization of devout Christians during the medieval area who carried out an important mission to protect the European travelers visiting sites in the Holy Land while also carrying out military operations, aka Inquisition. The Templars in Spain held out against the king's troops and their castles in the end, they were found not guilty of hearsay and under the protection of King James, they became part of the Order of Montesa, which was affiliated with the Calatrava. The Knights nice Templar traced beginnings to the late Kingdom of Jerusalem in 1120. So if they're in the Kingdom of Jerusalem in the 1100s, they're black. King of Baldwin and Patriarch Warmud were given the task of protecting pilgrims on the roads to Jerusalem, which they did for nine years until they elevated to a military order, the Council of Troyes in 1129, and they became a fighting force in the Crusades. The Crusades were a series of religious wars initiated, supported, and sometimes directed by the Latin Church in the medieval period. So these are the dumb diverses and the Inta Cantera and all that shit. The best known of these Crusades are those in the Holy Land in the period between 1095 and 1291. So this is before the fall of the Moorish Empire. This is in the middle of it. So the King of France's accusations, there was no France back then, so the King that's in the landmass known as France. The Templar leader, Master Jacques Molay, had recently went to France for meetings with the Pope. In 1307, members of the Templar order in France were suddenly charged with heresy and arrested. In France, many ultimately, including their leader, were burned at the stake. Yeah, they're burning them at the stake. They're witches, dog. They're warlocks. Because even in Africa today, they, they burn witches alive. So the Templars. All right, so now I got to connect Templars to Masonry. God dang it. Easy money. So they became, they start suspecting them of working with the ops because of their brotherhood, and it's probably ops and the brotherhood. So it wasn't really ops, it was brothers. The Nice Templar, full name United States Religious, Military, and Masonic Orders of the Temple of St. John of Jerusalem, Palestine, Rhodes, and Malta. Is a fraternal order affiliated with Freemasonry. The Freemasons have also been connected with a mysterious order called the Knights Templar. All right, so that's an overstatement because of the Christian origins of these logics. Okay. The Knights Templar plus magic. <laughs> Magicians or heretics? Here we go. Damning allegations were made against the Knights Templar after their mass arrest in 1307. Same story. Looking through the charges, it's hard to make out whether the accusers thought they were magicians or heretics. Prosecutors sometimes characterize, characterize the Knights as sorcerers and on other occasions as defiers of church authority. So, of course, if Rome or Latin Rome or the Holy Roman Empire is trying to get away from 
any possible formidable threat that had magic, power, and weapons. It would be these guys, whether they were sorcerers or not. Worshipping heads that spoke to them, engaging in satanic kissing, wearing magical ropes, and initiating new members in dark and secret ceremonies, those are some of the juicy images of the Templars created by their enemies that have stayed with us ever since. So what do they do? They worship dead skulls. So almost every fraternity, especially white fraternities in America, has a skull in their fucking thing. Since skull and crossbones, right? Engaging in satanic kissing, which we get some of the gay rumors from, right? Wearing magical ropes, which I don't know nothing about. And initiating new members in dark and secret ceremonies, which is every fraternity. Heretics scared the church more than magicians, but the Templars were a cast of both. So magicians really didn't scare the normies. My understanding is that most of the medieval period, what really scared bishops and popes was the threat of heresy. Magic was a nuisance and something that to be snuffed out whenever it arose. See what I'm talking about? So magic offends the church, but the church not worried about it. But the church is on standby in the case it arises. So if this woman that was with Kev was a nurse that did something to a fraternal brother, they're going to investigate her privately anyway. Like that girl he was with, she's under investigation. Whether the feds or whoever did it, his brothers are going to investigate her to sniff her out. Period. If she's part of a coven, if it turns out that she's also a practicing witch, because she's what? She's Spanish, right? And I'm sorry, my Spanish people, but you know how y'all women give it up. A lot of those women in the Santeria or Santeria or however you want to say it, come on, look at her. Like, if she's part of a coven, if it turns out that she's part of someone who does work or a group that does work, they're going to be under investigation. And if the work worked, oh, Lord, there's going to be a whole bunch of random death and arrests that don't make sense to explain away what happened to his brother. But we have a focus on where to look, though. If she was a nurse that met him the day before, she was a nurse in Atlanta. So then you got to look at, so then what's going to come under scrutiny is which coven's in Atlanta. Because somehow they bypassed the charter that the Masons have with the Eastern Stars. Or they bypass the charter that his fraternal order has with the female fraternal orders. So they both have a vested interest in sniffing her out. So for her sake, hopefully she's not the catalyst for any of it. Because you're about to see that shit play out in real time. It don't take long. It, it don't take long at all. Spirits don't take long. Spirits are not the white FBI. They, they, they don't play that game. She's part of the coven, dog. It's a wrap. If they investigate her and find out she's into some type of group on Facebook or whatever, it's a wrap. But what about all those witches that were burned? Well, the witch burning craze didn't really take off until the very late in the Middle Ages, from the 15th century to the 17th century. With the Templars, we're looking at 12th and 14th. It was heresy that gave prelates and jitters. Why? False belief as a pulp, so it undermined the foundation of the church. It also could be alarmingly popular. To the Cathar heresy in southern France threatened to topple the church authority in a region that was subject of a vicious and bloody crusade to suppress it. Yeah, so the Templars were magicians, the Templars hidden with masons, and the magical ancient orders and traditions preserved that magic. That's it. It goes no further than that. And oh, by the way, they were black. Hence Noble Drew Ali and P.B. Randolph being Rosicrucians. These are facts. What is a Rosicrucian but a Templar with a prettier cross? Magus Incognito, the secret doctrine of the Rosicrucians, written by a magician. I don't have time at all. This is this is this is this is funny style. What kind of fucking rabbit hole bullshit am I on? How did the culmination of all my dailies circle back to Kevin Samuels? It, this shit don't even. If you don't get your ass, you know what I'm talking about. Seventeenth century esoteric order to the world made seeking its knowledge attractive to many. The mysterious doctrine of the order is built on esoteric truths of the ancient past. There we go, ancient order which concealed from the average man provide insight into nature, physical universe, and the spiritual realm. Magic, magic, and magic. 
The manifestos do not elaborate extensively on the matter, but clearly combine references to Kabbalah, Hebrew, Hermeticism, aka Kemeticism, prior, alchemy, alchem, the black niggas who had a motherfucking pine saw in their cabinet, and Christian mysticism. And in Christian mysticism, what do you have? They have a picture of niggas. In Christian mysticism, the niggas is niggas. You see that freeway beard? Don't play with me, white man. You do not have dreads and beards like that, white folk. Don't don't fall for the okie doke. Oh yeah. If Jesus was black, tight beats. And he got the Fred Sanford baldy. Come on now, these are Negroes. Who the fuck do they think they're fooling? So Christian mysticism is black. All right, whatever. Whatever, dog. We we. we I see what you did there. Because you find all these black paintings in Russia, in the Orthodox Church. Hence, the magical order of the, the Russians even know. Fucking Russian Orthodox Church plus black saints, nigga. Let's stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. All day, twice a day. This, These are the paintings left in Russia. Russia, you think, is a bunch of white people. There's a little bit of white people in Russia and a whole bunch of Asian people in Russia, but the saints and their titles is reserved for Moors. That's why this circle backs the block. All saints of Russia Orthodox Church. If you don't get this white mother... Listen. Yeah, you're going to have this white nigga on your fucking YouTube screenshot and then post this damn picture. Where the niggas at? Y'all playing on my emotions. Don't give me this fucking icon class bullshit. I want the original works. Nah, your agent. Okay. Yeah, give me the old crispy shit. When niggas got full beards and shit, looking like Jerome. The black Madonna. Yeah. And this is what the Vatican prays to now. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, because there's nothing but black people in the fucking descendants of Genghis Khan, because Genghis Khan was black. Uh-huh, I get it. King Solomon, Genghis Khan, Prester John, whatever your persuasion, same niggas, still nigga. So it was an ancient order of black magicians that made its way to black HBCU universities in black groups such as Nation of Islam, Moorish Temple Science of America, etc., etc. It's the same people or the same club, the same uh the same root of so different branches of the same tree. They're not black Russians, they're just Russian Russians. Anyone who's not a black Russian is a white Russian. So you know what I'm saying? Like you can't say they're black Russians if Russians are originally black. They're not black Russians. They're just Russians. Everybody else then gets an adjective because they're not the original Russians. Rossi, Rossia, Rosacrucian, Rossia. The place is called Rosacrucian, basically. It's the same root word, the, the Rosacrucians and Rossia. But you got your fucking, your boy, um, Gannibal. He's a Moor. His grandson who created the Russian language is a Moor. The, 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 Russia is a Moorish empire. That's why they say the Tartarian Empire, right? The Tar, Tar, double black, the black, black empire starts in Mongolia, right? That's the whole white narrative about the mud flood is that it's Tartarian. Well, it's in the word, Tartar. Tartar isn't affecting, isn't describing white Russians. What's Tartar about white Russians and Mongoloids? Nothing. What's, what's Tartar about Siberians? Nothing. The only thing that could be Tartar about motherfucking Russia is that it came from Tartar Genghis Khan, who was black, whose sons were black, who great grandsons were black, who did this whole conquest of the world called Tartaria. And their buildings show up all over the black cities of the United States, where there's black people with black secret societies hiding black magic. My nigga, what's going on? artwork is the same in Greece? That makes sense because what do they call these lodges in America? Greeks, right? 
Mention Russia and here comes the bots. I know that's right. While you were talking about witches, I just left the Botanica. Los B. Gotta be more careful. Magic as a co- colloquial SM Zeus. There we go. Robert Atkins is probably Egyptian mythology, more like Horus instead of Jesus. You think in recent time that they didn't flip it by then? Originally, I agree with you. I think by the 14th century, though, already, everything got Jesus-fied. Because I'm thinking that year 1000 is really year zero. Mention Russia, RTP is the Messino evil. My grandma got pictures of the Black Saints, Haru, on the track. Well, yeah, that makes sense. Because if you could do the Latin, Latin dictionary or the Latin definition of Mare, M-A-U-R. It's a purple website, if I could ever find it again. From Low German, Morian, which is a Moor. Moor, which means Negro. So I need y'all to check this out real quick. So why are all the other black people in the conscious community going crazy, trying to figure out if we're Moors or not? In the word itself, Negro appears. Negro means more. In German, more means more, means Negro, means more. All the different transfigurations of more. M-O-O-R, M-A-U-R, M-O-H-R, all of them come back to Negro. Period. But it's even more specific when you get into Latin. It's not just Negroes or black-skinned people. It's also preserved for saints. I just can't find that fucking website. It was a Latin website that was telling you the origins of it. So you got Mauritanian, which is Northwest Africa, Greece. You got Moor, which is everybody else. Mauritanian, Moorish. I'm getting closer. It's another website. It's a purple website. That gives you context to how the words were used. And it was explaining the saints. Like uh, Saint Benedict and all of them. They're all Moors. They're not black saints. They're Moorish saints. And there's a really tricky difference there. There's no ancient black history. There's no black gods. There's no black saints. There's just Moors. And then when you connect the fact that the saints of the Christian church were Moors, then you understand the Holy Roman Empire propelled those saints forward. Then you understand the Holy Roman Empire itself is ran by Moors. And then when you look at it today, you go, oh, they overthrew the Moors. How? What's that story? It's not there. There it is. Moor is a variant transcription of the name Maurice. Moor is also a variant transcription of the name Maru or Maro. Maurice is most widely used. Baby names that include Moor is Moor, Moor, all the versions of Moor that people argue about. Indian, Mihir, is also Moor. For niggas, Maynard, niggas, Maro, niggas, Muir, niggas, M I R, niggas, M E R, niggas, M A R, niggas. On the pyramid, Niggas. In the names of countries. Niggas. In America. Niggas. The land of black people. Hello. Hello. It's right there. You get a Porto Rican. You got a Mer Rican. Why is this so hard? Like, I don't know. I don't know why people argue. I'm talking about the people that be arguing this shit. They they come off real retarded to me. Like like on some Agent Smith self-destruct shit. Like, nah, let's let's change this to mean something. It goes more in Japanese, goddamn. More in Chinese. Where's that definition that's in the preview? Y'all playing with my emotions. Because they're trying, they trying to wipe this shit out, you weirdos. Check this out. Mar means black. It's the same as mare or more, hence Negro. Maritus means black in Latin. Saint Mar is the same as Saint whoever. So Saint Mar, Saint the black, the Negro, the nigga. All the saints were Moors. There's no confusion about this in terms of the Latin Catholic Christian Holy Roman Empire demonstration. It, they don't become white until 
the what 16 1700s and they're saying that over and over and over again but there's one that's very poignant because it brings up saint benedict i think it's the latin definition of maurice because remember saint maurice is where they get this whole thing from but what's particular about saint maurice is that it's not a boy it's a girl again it's the matriarchy yeah so yeah this is a billion different meanings telling you more is what the fuck it is and is what the fuck that most of us are let me try one more let me try latin definition of maurice see if i get lucky dark skinned and swarthy so swarthy is a synonym to dark skinned which is a synonym to Moor, which is a synonym to Negro. So swarthy can't be olive colored Israel person in Jerusalem today because they're not swarthy colored. From the Latin word Maurus, inhabitant of Mauritania or Moor. Latin Martius. Yeah, I got it. So the Latin church is the Moorish church, which is why they say Latin's a dead language, because it killed the Moors. Okay. Name doctor. Don't fail me now. See right here, it says derived from Latin Morus meaning belonging to the people of the Moors. It's an ethnic origin to that name. It's a black name. So St. Maurice is what? A black woman. Especially during the time period they invented these meanings. So I say all that to say that knowing that the Holy Roman Empire is a black Roman Empire and that these fraternities survive the Inquisition, survive the church, and it's transforming from a white church to a black church or a black church to a white church. That is the real T here. And then we'll get into how everyone lost their memory and what magic spells they've been doing ever since. But that's the Holy Roman Empire of all the saints. This is their flag. The triple black phoenix or the double headed whatever the fuck they want to pretend it is. But we know it's a phoenix. Yeah. The disrespect, I can't accept. That this is the seat of power. This is the original seat of power when it comes to Christendom. The whole reason why you're a Christian today is because of these niggas. Because remember, these niggas on the left was Muslim, and these niggas on the right were fucking Genghis Khan. And whatever type of time he's on, they speculate he was a Muslim that he aligned with it, that he didn't care what religion you practice. He killed you for other reasons. <laughs> what do they say? If Genghis Khan came to your hand, if Genghis Khan came to your country, it was a symbol of God exacting judgment. I was like, God dang. Peace out, Oliveira. Most sire beats was good. Robert Atkins, double-headed eagle. Eagle is Roman. It's a phoenix, but we'll go with eagle because what... The eagle then comes to America, right? They say the eagle has landed, and that's a Masonic term, no? The eagle, which becomes a singular eagle instead of a double-headed eagle, has landed. That's a Masonic gesture, right? Then you go further than that, you get to it's a church affiliation, because, of course, the Templars and the Masons are all subservient via their oath to the church. So I need you to understand that, at least conceptually, that when you're dealing with any of these groups or even like the, the fringe groups or the other brotherhoods or orders, most of them overtly, like mission statement, they are all Constantinians. And I guess the that's the whole thing, why we got King James and all that. Because obviously that Nicene principle or that Constantinian principle is more recent than they pretend it is. So these are all church. Uh, these are all arms or branches of a church or a Constantinian paradigm. But what I'm really drawing here 
isn't the fact that they belong to the church is that their magical branches are offered to assist the church. Like the reason why the church ain't really stressing about the magic is because they deal with it when it arises because they already have a branch of magicians who can deal with it. That's why the church wasn't really bugging like, ah, you know, they got magic, they got magic, but mine is better. We'll go ahead and send our people to deal with that nigga in that town, if need be. But we don't need to worry about that. We need to deal with the people changing people's minds. Who's making them think that there's another way to salvation, or another way to run government, or another way to live their life. That's what they're worried about. They're worried about their constituency. They weren't worried about the crazy things that humans do. So, just keep that in mind. This Constantinian Creed. So, there's like several oaths. And I've drawn this diagram before from a different context so like if you think about it if you go to a frat then you go to the military because there's frats in the military too right let's not get cute then let's say you join a lodge or a brotherhood and then you join some type of government uh, uh, government contractor or branch because you know you retired from the military active service but you still have a set of skills and relationships. Look at how many oaths there is. There's one for your frat, one for the military, one for the lodge you join, one for the contractor you join, and Lord knows what else you get into it. So these people can't even speak on this shit. Like, they're gridlocked by oaths, and I'm sure some of the oaths cancel out or double down the other oath, especially when you get into the fact that then, on some fly shit, a lot of them become decons of churches or members of a church. Boom, there's another oath right on top of that. You, you you got five oaths before you can have fucking Sunday dinner with your wife trying to kill you because you're crazy. Come on now. They're not showing my links. Randy Swag. That makes sense though, Randy. DJ Georgie Porter says, Aztecs left their home to look for a place to start a new life. Their God had told them to find a lake where an eagle with a snake in its beak would stand on a no pal cactus growing from a rock. Fuck is going on with all this birds? <laughs> they said a lot of the Aztecs made it to the Carolinas. They called them Aztec roofers. And they're just dark skinned people. So the land they were headed to, or the lake they were headed to, there would be an eagle with a snake in his beak and would stand on a cactus growing from a rock. What's a nopal cactus? It's common name in Spanish, so Moors. It's a known species in Mexico. So it's a type of cactus that's prolific in Mexico, which makes sense. We're talking about Aztecs. There's cactus in Indiana. There's cactus in Lake Michigan. There's cactuses, a type of cactus in the Midwest region. And the reason why I did that, because you said the eagle would go where the snakes would be, where the lake is. So a place where you have cactus, eagles, snakes, and lakes. Um, eagle migration and Great Lakes. So these are all the cross hatches of eagle migrations. And you just overlap it with where the lakes are. So of course there's eagles. They call them the Mississippi flyways. They definitely visit the Great Lakes regions. Yeah. So cactus, eagles, lakes. So their god was sending them up north. And that makes sense, right? Because if you get up north, if you get to the mitten, if you get to the place where the eagle meets the cactus, meets the snake. Let me see what the snake, what type of snakes? Snake, I bet I bet you it's Michigan. Snakes and snakes and Michigan. What kind of snakes you guys have? Yeah, they have all the fucking snakes. Yeah. 
you know, the Aztec God was sending his people up north. Giselle Mahone says, but the Roman Catholic Church been on their frankincense and myrrh, three kings incense. What does that mean? It recently got transformed into a patriarchy and then turning into a patriarchy was made to fall apart. Randy Swag says it talks about exactly what you're talking about. Oh, the links? The Christian church says magic is an abomination. Also, three kings that visit Jesus were magi. Yeah, the three kings were magicians. Aaron was a magician. Um, there's quite a few magicians in the Bible. But the Bible doesn't say magic is an abomination. It says the people who practice certain arts that fall into deceptive arts, they, the people, are an abomination because they're consulting with familiar spirits, dead spirits, and strange things to get their information. Whereas Aaron was different because he got his magic from the source. So basically, it's a demarcation line between magic and sorcery. They're not quite the same, strictly speaking. So we'll do that for the Christians who don't know all their favorite people are magicians. Because you'll miss it because of what brother is saying. The, the, the quote-unquote church, a.k.a. the cute and clamorous people behind the pulpit, they, Aaron and Bible plus magic Pharaoh. I, I'm always trying to find this story. Give me the scripture. Yeah, the Christians call magic miracles. <laughs> Let me get the Geneva Bible. Why ain't you playing with these niggas? Geneva Bible. Bible Gateway. Thank you. Where does the bullshit start? In Exodus 7. God spoke to Moses through a burning bush and charged him to speak to Pharaoh on his behalf by Exodus 3. God granted Moses, Moses the ability to perform miracles, Exodus 4, because Pharaoh demi, demand a sign. And Pharaoh immediately summoned his magicians who were able to turn their own staffs into snakes. And what must have been an anonymous sign for Pharaoh's court, Aaron's snake devoured the magician snakes, Exodus 7, 8 through 13. So... Did you hear that? Did, did they teach you that in Sunday school? That they were having a magic battle? Exodus 7. God hardeneth, hardeneth Pharaoh's heart. So here's the first strike and violation if you want to get into contradictions. Pharaoh was, was told to let Moses' people go. Pharaoh was protesting it because he wanted a viable sign to do so. Pharaoh didn't trust the sign because he has a whole court of magicians and sorcerers. So Pharaoh's like, you have to do something a little bit better than that little man to prove to me that your God said this thing. Then God said, well, we're going to harden Pharaoh's heart. Why would, you know what I'm saying? What for? Now he's going to be disagreeable, right? Moses and Aaron do the miracles of the serpent in the blood and Pharaoh's sorcerers do the like. So Moses and Aaron both can do Magic based on the serpent, snakes, and blood. Blood magic and snake magic, right? But so can Pharaoh's sorcerers. So the miracles that Aaron and Moses are doing is equal to the sorcery that the Pharaoh people are doing. You understand so far the why that little slight little word miracle throws you off the magical trail when you go to Sunday church? They talk about the miracles that was performed. They're talking about magic because it's right here. It's a simile in the Bible. Like, this miracle is the same thing as this sorcery. Don't get lost in the sauce, because that's, that's how they hit you in the head and keep going. The Lord said to Moses, Behold, I have made these pharaohs God, and Aaron, your brother, shall be your prophet. Thou shalt speak all that I command to thee, and Aaron, thou brother, shall speak it unto Pharaoh, and that he suffer the children of Israel to go out of his land. So God is like, yo, this is what I want you to do. And this is what Aaron's going to do. And we're going to get you the fuck up out of here. Pharaoh's not going to like this. He's going to feel irritated. And he's going to let y'all go. He's going to drive y'all away. 
but I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my miracles. There goes that tricky word again. And my wonders, there goes the other word, magical and miracles, in the land of Egypt. So God is about to turn up the magic meter in Egypt. And Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that I may lay my hand upon Egypt and bring out my own armies, even my people and children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. So there goes the different plagues. Then the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. So Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded them, even so did they. Now Moses was, of course, fourscore years old, and Aaron fourscore and three when they spoke unto the Pharaoh. So they're 40 and 43 years old. And the Lord has spoken unto Moses and Aaron, saying, If Sparrow speaks unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you, then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall be turned Pharaoh, and it shall be turned into a serpent. Then Moses and Aaron went unto Pharaoh and did as the Lord had commanded, and Aaron cast forth his rod, paws, before Pharaoh and his servants, and it was turned into a serpent. Then Pharaoh also calls for the wise men and sorcerers, so the wise men, the three wise men, and the sorcerers, and those charmers also from Egypt. What charmers? Snake charmers. Why? Because this is snake magic. And did it in like manner with their enchantments, aka with their magical properties. They did the same exact thing that Aaron did. For they cast down every man his rod, and they were all turned into serpents, but Aaron's rod devoured their rods. Pause. So Aaron's snake ate the other snakes. Pause. But you get, the, you get where this is going. So Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not to them as the Lord had said. Basically, he, he, shucked it, he, he bit his teeth and said, fuck these niggas. The Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh's heart is obstinate, and he refuses to let thy people go. Which is funny, because God hardened his heart. <laughs> go unto Pharaoh in the morning. Lo, he will come forth unto the water, and thou shalt stand and meet him by the river's brink in the rod, which was turned into a serpent, and thou shalt take in thine land. So this goes back to the whole little Aztec prophecy that DJ Georgie Porgy said about the God of the Aztecs. Well, the God of the Aztecs asked them to meet in a place, a body of water, where the snake and the eagle meets at the cacti, how different is that story than this story where it says God sent to Pharaoh in the morning that you meet him by the river's brink in the rod, which was turned into a snake. I shall take mine thou by thine hand. And you know, the whole Quetzalcoatl thing back there in the South America, Mexico. And thou shalt say unto him, the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has sent unto me saying, let my people go. They may serve me in wilderness and behold, hitherto thou wouldest not hear it. Thus saith the Lord, in this thou shalt not know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in my hand upon the water that is in this river, and it shall be turned into blood. And the fish in the river shall die, and the river shall stink, and it shall grieve the Egyptians to drink this water. The Lord then spake to Moses, saying unto Aaron, Take thy rod, stretch out thy hand over the waters of Egypt, over their streams, over their rivers, over their ponds, over all their pools of their waters, and they shall be blood, and there shall be blood throughout the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and stone. So all the water is turned into blood, which is also kind of like a, a forecasting literary device that the New Testament writers use when Jesus is able to turn water into wine in the wineskins or whatever he wants. It's the same type of uh, throwback. But would you say that Jesus performing miracles such as turning water into wine is any or more or less magical than Moses and Aaron doing magic against sorcerers? That's the conversation that Christians don't want to have. It's not that ma magic is all through this book. It's just that the words that we use, people start getting cute and shit. Like, oh, it's not magic magic. It's miracle magic from God. But then it says God created all things good and evil. So magic magic, sorcery, and witchcraft was also created by God, no? Oh, oh, it's about your pure... Oh, you J.W. Lucas now. I ain't got time for that. That, that cute and clamorous part, just call a spade a spade. Niggas is doing magic in the Bible. The end. Because the conversation is not about whether God or the devil or whoever did it. We're saying, can new, niggas do magic or not? Yes. All right, so it's a propensity that we're dealing with magic in our real lives in present day now. Yes. How do you protect yourself against it? Well, you know, if you do a couple of Hail Marys or you pray to black Jesus on Sunday and you're like, ah, don't worry about it. It's in God's hands. And they hit you with the rope, rope, ropey dope, okey dope. Nah, nah, no, we're not on that type of time. We got to protect ourselves. This shit is going overt because we live in the strangest, most wonderful times ever. 
And the, the order of the day is how to protect yourself. So Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded and he lifted up his rod. They smote the water that was in the river in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants. And all that was water that was in the river was turned into blood. So this whole thing is a fucking dance off between magicians. Is Aaron, is the Lord in air quotes, whoever that may be, because they're talking to Moses, who has to then, because remember, Moses has a speech impediment. So he uses Aaron as his voice, his prophet. And Aaron is communicating to Pharaoh, like, listen, for this routine, we're going to turn all your shit into blood. You fuck with us or not? Nah? And Pharaoh's like, mm, that's that's mad decent, but I still don't believe y'all because I kind of need y'all niggas here. Like, And then they say God hardened his heart on top of that. He's like, mm, mm, I really don't want to let y'all niggas go. Nah, that's, that's cute and all, but I can't let you go. So what happens? They split the Red Sea, which was made red by this magical trick. Because Pharaoh wasn't convinced. And then in God's majestic way, not only does he free the children of Israel, but he destroys Pharaoh and his army all in one episode. And I guess that's when you get into my ways is not your ways. God's ways are higher because God is using his prophets to kill two birds with one stone. When you personalize it and you just see yourself as Moses is like, why did you harden Pharaoh's heart? He almost, we almost had him on the first fucking stunt when the snake ate the snakes. But you hardened his heart and made it harder because... God had to provoke Pharaoh to kill himself. And that's what a lot of these spirits do, too. A lot of these spirits cannot overtly harm you, which is why it's kind of capped that they said, oh, it was witchcraft that killed Kevin Samuels. Unless he did some type of death ritual, death magic, or equivalent, no form of magic should have been able to kill him, and which is why I'm leaning more towards of the quote-unquote witchcraft that's involved in something like that may, and I'm not speaking from experience, but based on the rules that are alleged here, that he was just overtly killed by a woman. Now, was that woman a witch? Did that woman beguile him? Did that woman cause him to put his defenses down or whatever safety measures or protective measures that he had, right? Because we're saying that his hands are dirty because he's privy to this type of science. Then she bypassed all that. And that could just be the amount of magic she needed. They needed to get a woman close enough to him to give him something, for him to interact with something by touch, taste, feel, whatever. He had to open something, swap something, etc. That would be the craft work. The death, not so much. These spirits don't just go around willy-nilly killing people. Because if that's the case, then our ancestors, who are allegedly slaves, were just getting willy-nilly killing all the descendants of slave masters. And that doesn't happen. And those are the ancestors you have access to, right? The alleged slaves, right? who would be embittered by the fact that they're hung on trees, beat, raped, killed, right? They would be pretty much fucking wraiths and poltergeists, right? If the lifestyle matches the narrative, matches our descendant, the people we descend from, they'd be fucking up shit all the time, just like the hunted, the alleged hunted uh, slave houses where white people go there and they can't keep the house for some reason. It, it's not because it's hunted by slaves. It's because it's hunted by the black owners of the house, who were killed by white people who came to this country under a different name and stole their identities, which is why black and white people have the same last names. It's because a lot of white people came here stealing our identities. There's a whole story about that. Over and over again in history, white people are beguiling and, and stealing and pillaging shit, and then, boom, you put them in these places of power or these locations of power, the location or the power source turns on them. And they can't control that, so they got to put a whole bunch of first nigga this, first nigga that, first black person this, first person black in those positions to operate the energy. That's all that is. Don't let them fool you. So, But my point being, if slavery affected quote-unquote black Americans the way that it's portrayed, our spirit guides, our ancestors would have even more motivation to do the murdering. And that's not happening to us or for us. So I don't think that's what happened to my man's Kev Samuels. But I think the plot or the narrative and the reveal did indeed happen. And that's how spirit works. It's going to kill two birds with one stone. What are we talking about? Anyway. Search lost feathers, Randy Swag. Don't follow astrology. The three kings were astrologers. <laughs> Rob Rackett says, Aaron casts snakes into, sins into a demon. So does he mean he called up demons. Azazel the scapegoat. Azazel was the first demon that came down here to fuck on the bitches. That's why he's the scapegoat. 
He was about that life. The niggas were smoking water. <laughs> they had that Pharaoh pack up that night by the time they cross it. Young McFly TV says, pause, pause, pause. What's good? <laughs> yeah. The, 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 the poles eating poles, the rods eating rods. Jesus Christ. Will Ty said, the Pharaoh said, oh, we got ARs too. We must be twins today. For real, it reads just like that. It reads just like it's a battle, like it's a dance-off. Am I paused? Or are you just, oh, you're just saying pause because of the, okay. How were Pharaoh's magicians able to perform miracles? They weren't performing miracles. They are performing sorcery. The magicians were also able to turn water into blood as Moses did. The second place was a horde of frogs. The magicians summoned their own frogs, adding to the problem. After this, however, the magicians' power stopped as they were unable to replicate any further plague. They then acknowledged that they were witnessing the finger of God and Moses. So they are only able to duplicate the first two plagues. They didn't have the spell book for the next five. But how were they able to do this in the first place? There are two possible answers to this question, a.k.a. we have no fucking idea. The first is that the magicians received their power from Satan. Satan is not in any version of this book. So how are we begin? The nigga, if you don't sit your goofy ass now, although not as powerful as God, Satan, formerly one of God's highest angels, has the power to deceive, emulate miracles, and even tell the future with a certain degree of accuracy, according to the New Testament. Exodus is not in the New Testament, so why are we talking about that? Satan may have given Pharaoh's magicians the power to duplicate some of the signs. No, nigga. It's the same kind of magic. God made all things good and evil, including Satan. Including this, the magic that they want to describe to Satan, that's all comes from God in the same New Testament. They said God created all these things. So you can't even give credit to Satan. Like, no, no. The power comes from God. Magic and miracles, all of it comes from God. Good, bad, and different. Hence the law of polarity. Good, bad, he said, I'm the creator of all things. That's why. That's what I'm saying. It's like they don't read the whole fucking Bible. There's a time for what? There's a time for love and a time for hate. And later on in the Bible, it'll be like, it's God that creates all these things. What are we talking about? When people start referring to God as like, the reason why things happen, it gets mad choppy because it diminishes the free will that the individuals have who implore these techniques. It's like, oh, you know, it doesn't matter that random people can do magic just like Moses because the devil's behind them and the devil's bad. Therefore, magic is bad. Stay away from it. And it's like, nah, nigga, I don't have a problem with God and the devil. I have a problem with, hold up, niggas can do magic? Like, we get too caught up in the choppy waters of, like, if niggas should do magic. First of all, magic is real? Yeah, magic is real. And mad niggas do it from all cultures, from all religions. Word. Then you can go, why would God allow something like that? Then you have a whole nother story about humans. That's it. It don't go no further than that. We don't have to invoke God or the devil. We just need to figure out, is magic real? And if magic is real, how, who, what, when, where? And if people have been doing it since the Bible, is there speculation that the magic that was done since then is the magic that people still do now, such as plagues? Because he just told you at that time, Pharaoh's army can do two types of plagues so far. Poisoning the waters and um, hostile takeover of insects or creatures such as like locusts such as uh cicadas frogs etc any invasive species can be onset by a sorcerer so if you think about warfare in the sense of a magical warfare is there any evidence in america's history of widespread plagues and unexplainable events that could have happened that didn't happen naturally but may have happened because a certain clan or secret group of sorcerers came to America, such as every fucking fire in the 1800s, such as the poisoning of our water tables, such as the, the mass die-off of mad people and mad animals. This whole thing of Exodus happened in America in the 1800s. No cap. 
The same exact symbols. It happened in America in the 1800s. King James, who wrote the King James Version of the Bible, was in Virginia when he wrote it, right? In America. And at the same time, he was writing the book of demonology, correct? The same time when he did his Bible, he removed some of those books that are known as Apocrypha, right? Such as Tobit, which tells you how to protect your house from demons by using fish guts, correct? So the ability to protect yourself from demons is removed from the Bible. Because you don't need to worry about that. You just need to consult your local pastor or call the Ghostbusters. Don't worry about doing your own spell work to protect yourself. Come to us at the church. We'll handle it. Basically is what it is. It's like you have to confess. Basically is like they created it in a way that it made people afraid of it. Then it made people accountable saying, hey, I think there's magic. I need to tell somebody in the church. And then the church nips it in the bud. So it's not like the church wouldn't handle it. It's that the church didn't want to handle it because they're dealing with indigenous people with a different form of magic and they need them all sniffed out. So niggas started snitching. Like, oh, such and such stole my husband. whoop de whoop Oh, really? How did she do that, you may ask? Well, she made spaghetti and it was a half-phase waxing moon. And, oh, that sounds very interesting. How did your husband behave? Do you think you can get us a meeting with Miss Cornelia? Do you think you can get her to come to church on Sunday? And then the next thing you know, the bitch is floating in the goddamn lake in the backyard. You don't, don't, don't play with me. Because you just dumb this shit down to how humans do dumb shit. And then we have the nerve to have magic too. Like this shit is, this is too much for me. Robert Atkins says dance battles. All I can think of is the movie Grease. All these gangs hating on each other, so their solution? Let's dance it out. At least 14 books were removed, maybe even more. Average Joe B says, Witches, Warlocks, and Mini Me's and Dragons are all part of Forgotten History. Especially the double... It's nay on the dragon part. Because the dragon part's the most interesting part. Because if you keep it a buck 55, most of the gods in the Bible are described as dragons. Breathing smoke, breathing fire, terrible voices with the ability to fly, Correct. And then the evil dragons, the serpents, because serpents aren't snakes, the serpents who can't fly, who are, who are ground-based, who can transform into humans and beguile women, right? That's every fucking Dragon Age video game movie, that dragons are shapeshifters. And then you get into the reptilian narrative, right? That you're part reptilian. You have a reptilian brain and these other mammalian parts and shit. But something about you is reptile. Come on, dog. That's Inky and Enlil all over again. Enki, the god of the ground, Enlil, the god of the sky. And then they, they say that, according to the Greek or the Hebrew, that Yahweh is Enlil. Because you get the Eloha or the Elohim. It's the same shit. We're talking about flying dragons and shit. So then you have to, like, then your mind has to do something else. Wait a minute. If there's a propensity that the original writers of the book, not the modern ones, but the original writers of the books, if there's any propensity that any of those bad guys are good guys, including Bell the Dragon, which Daniel 4, Daniel kills the dragon, right? If any of those people believed in dragons, that dragons could talk, that dragons could do magic, that dragons could shapeshift and fuck on women, what would happen if they let everybody know that at once? With no prior, no priors of indoctrination. They'd be like, that's big ass fucking cap. Part two. Well, if the dragon part is big ass fucking cap, then what about the rest of the book? Oh, it must be Cap because these niggas believed in flying dragons and talking dragons, right? So far, so good, right? You see why they remove a dragon, right? Now you don't know what's talking. It's just a talking snake. It's a metaphor. But if it was literally a dragon, because it was, then you go, do I believe a story about fucking dragons and midgets and shit? You'll probably go, probably not. Why am I dealing with this religion? And then the church goes, heresy or duality. There were dragons. Can't have it both fucking ways. Because what's, what's the Grand Master called? The Grand Dragon, right? Of the Ku Klux Klan? Which has a holy chloron, which comes from niggas. They're Grand Dragons, right? Master Dragons, right? The Vatican, the Vatican has a whole chamber with a woman coming out of like this forest that looks like a bunch of demons. They call them demons, but it's really reptilians. Right? Shapeshifters, reptilians, right? Dragons, shapeshifters. Words connect. There's a difference between dragons that can fly and then dragons who are de-winged and can't fly, correct? 
Because when you hear about reptilians who are groundlocked, who, who use the form of humans, they can't fly. You never hear these white people in these interviews talk about reptilian humanoids that fly. But they tell you that Lucifer was cast out of heaven and lost his wings. That's why all these TV shows about Lucifer is about him on the path of redemption to what? To get his wings back. So if you do it literally instead and say, there's dragons that fly in Lil and there's dragons that can't fly, Inky. The problem is they're both fucking dragons and they both are fucking on bitches. But one has wings, one doesn't. Then what do you get? You get angels and demons, right? The demons look like what? Dragons! The demons look like terrible, ugly dragons. Look at every picture or painting of the devil. He looks like a dragon with horns that breathes fire. He's surrounded by fire and smoke. When you see a deadly spirit or a negative spirit on a person, it comes up as a black smoke on their head, right? Like a damn dragon. Fire breathing dragons. And then the angels, you see them. They're terrible looking too, but they can fly. They have wings. Same, same. You're talking about some fucking reptilians. You're talking about some goddamn sky people. You're talking about some goddamn ancient, old, forgotten world history where there was something besides us here. Then you have to ask yourself, if everyone was telling the truth, and it is what it is, is there propensity for those same forces to be here? For how long and which cycle is this? Because if it's been like that for thousands of years, it, it's nay on millions of years, you might find yourself part of a human growing farm experiment. And they don't want you thinking about that because the next thing a human is going to do if they feel that way and they're convinced that way, they're going to buck society into structure and look for a way out. It's not so much they're going to overthrow the government, is that they're not going to no longer subject themselves to a government because there's no point. Like, this shit is capped. There's dragons. Let's find them. Why am I trying to go to work and buy a house and there's a fucking dragon I can ride on, nigga? Like, I don't want to buy a Diablo no more. I want to buy a dragon. You see what I'm saying? It'll put your whole mind and the whole adventure be something else. Which is what everyone was doing until, what, 1940. You don't hear about people circling, circumnavigating the earth no more and getting into these lost remote places. Unless you go to a fucking Masonic channel like the Discovery Channel, which half of them are government contractors. They're not even independent people. They're not even like self-funded you know, funded Bruce Wayne type niggas. These are all government contractors doing those TV shows. So it's a there there. I just haven't located it yet. Because if we turn it on its head and said there's no such thing as magic, there's no such thing as dragons, then you have two problems. So what is religion talking about, including the Vedas, which introduces you to dragon people, by the way, and all your ancient magical sites with the serpents and snakes on every pyramid, by the way, if you just dismiss all that and said all the humans are capping, all the religions are capping, then what do you have left? Because now you don't have a god regulating it. Now you don't have a dragon regulating it. Now you just have humans doing crazy human shit. On some schizoaffective bullshit. Then what is this life? Then how did we get here? Then how do you explain everything else? It's a very tricky, slippery slope. That's why no one fucking touches it. Because no one fucking has the answer. The only thing you can hope for is that you experience magic. And you go, well, magic's real. That's settled. You see a shapeshifting reptilian and go, well, that's a thing. That's settled. The only thing left is finding God, I guess. King James Version also mentions unicorns. There we go. Hundo Hunter says, what if the Bible is simplified for your own good? That don't make no sense. Why is there a Bible? Think about it. Why would indigenous Americans, if everything's everything, if Egypt is over there, if Jesus was over there, if anyone writing the Bible or proliferating the Bible is over there, why does anyone over here who's been here for thousands of years need a simplified Bible, bar a Bible at all? Why is there a Bible for Americans when we're not in those stories? Per, per the narrative, I'm not saying like we can't get a Hebrew Israelite adaptation to make it make sense or Moorish American right where we're in Egypt now and make it make sense. I can make it make sense, but you have to try. But let's just say, cap. We'll use the official narrative. It's all over there. Why do we bring that to black Americans to proliferate? Why simplify it? Why explain it to them? Why give it to them at all? Because you're substituting something. And then, not only are you substituting something, but it's curious 
that they substituted something for us to grab onto and what they removed from it. Because the things they removed is way more alarming than the things they updated or simplified. What could they not simplify? What did they remove? And when you read the things they removed, you go, hmm. Enoch, Metatron, Ezazel, the scapegoat, and all these other stories, which makes the whole story of the Bible, if you include Apocrypha, Jesus was redeeming the fallen angels, not mankind. Because it was a fallen angel that threw the first stone. So remember, it's an eye for an eye. That is the old law, correct? Correct me if I'm wrong, because niggas like Jesus died for us not to honor the commandments. No, it was an eye for an eye, right? And the whole premise is that the serpent beguiled Eve, right? And the whole premise is that the lands was over flooded with Nephilim, right? Nephilim are what? Hybrids. Hybrids of who? Azazel and his crew. When they came down, they start fucking on earth bitches, but they're supposed to be angels, right? So the angels came down, start fucking on earth bitches, start having hybrid earth beings, and those hybrid earth beings were destroying each other. God got upset and was like, hey, yo, I'm just going to scramble the eggs real quick. I'm going to pick Noah, who's a hybrid, and we're going to save these people and everybody else. We're going to go ahead and dwindle them down. Then Noah moves forward, boop, 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 and you get the rest of the story. And that traces his lineage all the way through David, all the way to Jesus. And then Jesus is supposed to redeem this or complete this cipher. The cipher wasn't human's error. The cipher was fallen angel's error. Who came to see Jesus when he came down here? All the fallen angels, right? Lucifer included, right? Like, if you're really one of us, show me something. Go ahead and jump real quick. Let's see, let's see what your reflexes is like. And it sounds fly. It sounds like he's trying to tell Jesus to go kill himself. But if you understand that he's testing something that's like him, you go, well, if you're like us, you should be able to do all these things like us. Because they're sons of God, too. If Jesus is a son of God and the fallen angels are sons of God, he's saying, well, if you're my brother, prove it. And Jesus is like, I don't got time for your petty bullshit, bro. Like, fuck out my face with all the dumb shit. And Lucifer is like, all right. <laughs> He's like, all right, we'll see if you are who you are. Think about how stupid that is. If the devil is the right-hand man of God, how would he not recognize who Jesus is? He wouldn't have to test Jesus. Why? The devil doesn't test people. God does. The devil knows. That's his, that's his whole thing. He knows what all your weaknesses are. He knows what all your temptations are, right? That's how we, anytime we do something fucked up, we get to blame the devil because the devil has this precise mechanism of influencing regular ass humans so you're saying that same devil came up to jesus read his mind or whatever it is that he does and goes this one's not like the others his powers just failed him and in his power failing him he didn't recognize right away what he was dealing with one of his own come on now and then jesus dies and comes back to life does that qualify as death if you come right back to life after the weekend's over because if you died right now and you can come back Monday, would you die right now? If you kill a regular person, they don't come back. If you kill someone like Jesus, they come back, right? So are those sacrifices in line with each other? If you had to pay for the sins of your father and they had to kill you, you would die, your bloodline would die, and everything after you would die because you'd never come back. But if you take it in the matters of Jesus, he dies for three days and he wakes back up. Similar to Lazarus. He gets to continue going. They say he went up to the sky, which is curious, but he keeps going. Like, he doesn't die again. He's immortal at that point. If your son had to be sacrificed for humanity and become an immortal in three days, like, you'll see your son again in three days, what's the significance of that then? You can't kill an immortal. So how is the death of an immortal that didn't really suffered all the death which is time be equivalent to humans and their sacrifices which seem to be permanent is unequivocal it's not even you can't even like and he's god too like god killed himself for a couple of days and came back like the shit gets really cloudy because they're capping somewhere they they mistranslated something or they they took the context they did something funny with that and that shit was rocking. Like, black people in church really had me going for a lot of years. Like, yeah. Like, that was the ultimate sacrifice. Kill any mortal that can't die, and he'll come back in three days. 
And that, that death for three days is going to free everybody else. Meanwhile, if we die, there ain't no coming back. At least not in the same form. At least not with the same consciousness. As far as the spiritualists will tell you. So how is it, how is that effective is what I'm saying. How is killing a God or immortal or Jesus more effective than just killing the devil? Permanently. That, my friends, is duality. Because in order for you to have a good guy, you have to have a bad guy. If you kill the bad, if you kill the bad guy, there's no more good. If you kill the good guy permanently, there's no more good or bad. If darkness takes over the yin and yang chart, then there's nothing to contrast it with. Therefore, there's no more problem. If you cover the yin and yang with nothing but light and love and light and positivity, then there's no more darkness. So then the light has nowhere to go, to spread. So in order for it to remain in balance, in order for you to have a two-dimensional reality, you have to have both energies at play at the same time. The moment you, you remove any of them and it becomes a singular dimension, you don't have diversity and contrast. You don't have novelty. You don't have new. You just have one thing, which is why they have to exist in principle. What it really is, what this life really is, I can't tell you. I haven't seen enough of it to tell you. But I tell you right now, we grossly misunderstand just the general nature of this Bible, let alone the magical nature of it, let alone the magical nature of life. Because think about it. people. Everybody has witnessed a miracle by now. Everyone has prayed and got something. Everyone has seen someone go to church and get healed from something. Everyone has seen like that flunked out relative who turned around for God. We know something's happening, but are we paying attention to how? Magicians are. Sorcerers are. Witches are. That's all I'm saying. There's a there there, and I don't know how to explain it. Because it just seems asinine to me that there's even spells to hurt people. And that these people who do these spells get to live and keep going. And then eventually they die and be like, oh, it's over. The spell is broken. The evil witch is gone. And you're like, that witch rocked to be like 80 years old, though. My mom died at 21. Like, how does the, the evil 80-year-old's death redemption you feel what I'm saying? You picking up what I'm putting down? Like the shit's capped somewhere. Somewhere that law of karma or that law of balance ain't really what it's portrayed as. There's something, there's some fuckery afoot is what I'm saying to you. M theory says redacted on purpose. Lowe's B says now I want my dragon. Will Ty says the entities told him to edit out parts so they could start the energetic subscription service for the humans who can't reach the mites. Some group of entities got together and saw that they could free energy without having to be magical or work, so they created a spiritual click funnel called a hope funnel. A retelling of the battery metaphor. Hate to see it. The devil would have seen it in the stars. Be maverick. Exactly. Especially since they said the devil gave the Chaldeans astrology. In this case, Beelzebub. But that would have been Lucifer's friends. Like, you think Lucifer didn't get the grimoire from Beelzebub? <laughs> That's the funny thing, too, about the New Testament. They only give you one devil. The Old Testament has, like, mad devils, dog. They got mad names. Just like, like God, Shekinah, Glory, and all that stuff have all those names. The demons have those many names, too. If you matter of fact, if you look up the Goetia, the Lesser Key of Solomon, he's given them, what, 33 names? 32 names. So it's not just one devil if you want to play that game. But I don't think it's necessary for us to play that game. They're all trying to describe a principle. They're all trying to explain some type of mechanic of the universe to you. That's what I think. I think they took science and turned it into science fiction, which turns into mythology, which then turns into this other shit that we're trying to decode. But if you just use your fucking common sense and look at how things are going and what humans are saying, because we're the key to it all, right? It's all in our languages. It's all in our symbols. It's all handcrafted for humanity. It's not... It's not made for the turtles. It's not made for the deer. It's not made for the trees. It's made for humans, right? For humans by humans. All your evidence is going to be in the human sphere. The problem is, I think we're fucking around with energy and beings that are non-human. And that's the part that we can't compute because it's non-human. The human shit makes sense because human motivations don't change. It don't matter what year it is. Niggas want to suck, fuck, party, and bullshit. And the more power and more control they have of resources or people to do that, they'll do. That's the direction it goes every time in every society, 
and any power hungry person, it all goes the same direction. Party, bullshit, and fucking. It's rarely about your soul's progression. They're not giving report cards on how they have affected their immediate civilization and their spiritual growth. They're not doing a survey of out of all the people in your society, how many are heaven bound? You don't get you don't get the fucking Nielsen sound scan for for heaven bound citizens. There's no there's no fucking honorary award. There's no motherfucking anything along that line for the people who are doing righteousness. So obviously civilization and the rulers thereof give a fuck about that because that would be the metric that everything is based on. Because if one person can do it, then all of them can do it. The fact that no one can do any of it except for Jesus, which is even curious in itself, right? Because Jesus was supposed to come 2,000 years ago and he was supposed to make it easier because he's sending his, his, his messenger, right? They say it's the Holy Spirit, but the messenger is really Gabriel, right? We, we don't need to get into that. But whatever the case may be, with the Holy Spirit, you're supposed to do these things and more, a.k.a. this is supposed to make the saints' lives easier. Now ask yourself, as a so-called slave for 400 years, post-Jerusalem, post-freedom of children of Israel, post the, fan, the, 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 the promised land, post the fall of the kings of Israel, post-Jesus, you go into slavery again, and it's even harder. That don't make no sense. There's a whole bunch of narrative missing. Uh, wait until Revelations. Wait until part two is what they say to you. Wait until, wait. It's been 2,000 years. And you've been a slave for four to 500, but just keep on waiting. Jesus is going to come out the sky and clean this shit up for you. How did it loop? I don't have a problem with that assertion, but why would it take 2,000 years? When them niggas who were disobedient and fucking reprobate only had 40. They only did 40. They did 40 in the, in the fucking desert. They did 40 in the desert and they went to the promised land. We've been slaves for what? 400 years? And we don't even, and allegedly we didn't know nothing. We didn't do nothing. Just like Doja Cat said. Didn't do nothing. Mm -mm. Nah, Ak. Someone's lying about something. That's where we at right now. Figuring out the lies. Robert Atkins says, anytime you translate from one language to another, it's already corrupted because the words never meant the same thing. Translation changes context, which then changes meaning. Correct. In English language, every word has three definitions anyway, too, just in our own etymology. So we use the same English words and they inherently have three additional meanings. So you have the original meaning, the chosen meaning, and the alternatives. So everyone's going to give you a different word and they call it Rhema or they call it a, the preachers in the Sunday church say it's a, a living word because it does that. I was like, no, it does that because you're speaking English. Because if you read Hebrew and spoke in Hebrew, it'll be the Hebrew meaning. There wouldn't be a third, fourth, fifth alternative meaning because you don't do that in Hebrew. We don't need to learn Hebrew. Ah, here you go with the bullshit. You don't want to read the original book in the original language. You sound like an op. Because if your motherfucking grandmother was some Geechee princess from Mississippi River and she left her journal in her language, guess what you about to do? You about to learn her fucking language. But you don't want to learn your founding father's languages? That's, that's how I knew this shit was cap. When the elite people who follow this stuff don't want to do the elite shit. And there's no, expl there's no reasonable explanation for why not. You got all the years of your life to learn another language. Matter of fact, they started us learning another language in fucking elementary school. I learned French, Spanish, English, fucking Ebonics, code switching, office talk. I learned all those languages just, just marrying along the way. But these people talk about they love God. And they don't want to learn the original language the Bible's written in. Nor do they want to crowdsource all the trillions they make at church every Sunday to get access to those original scripts and do their own translation. Why not? If you're about that life, you want the real thing. And you got the money. And you got the power. And you got the people. And you got the connections. Because everyone's a Christian. In that particular structure. So why don't you like, yo, bro. Let's go to fucking motherfucking Orthodox Russia. Bring some of that shit back. Let's get some photocopies of some of that shit in the Vatican. For good measure. And yo, let's let's go to some of these other places we heard about. Who may have not been corrupted as much. And bring these um, particular scrolls together. And read them in their intended languages. And see if we get any more mysteries. Has that ever happened in the black community? 
as far as we know, Martin Luther King's father was sent with a group of black Baptist preachers to Lutheran Germany and seen some paintings in some museums and came back. And he was like, I'm going to rename my son and my family from Scott to King. And I'm not only that, I'm going to, he's going to go from Michael Scott to Martin Luther for the Lutherans. Because he went to Germany right before that, when he was six years old. Do y'all know that story? That Martin Luther King's name is not his name? That his father switched his name when he was six years old because of the Lutheran influence in Germany during Jim Crow? They had a bunch of black niggas from the South and Alabama and shit to go to Germany to learn something? You know that's unheard of. You better watch how you talking and where you better watch for how you walk in and where you talking. Or you and your homies might be lying in chalk print. That's Coolio, by the way. So this is this this shit's bizarre to me. I'm off that though. But yeah, Aaron's a magician. And his miracles are considered miracles. And Pharaoh's stuff is considered sorcery. But it's the same effect. If it's the same effect, then it's the same thing. In terms of context, explaining it. Any other questions, kids? Is this good enough for a Sunday service? You guys ready to go spend time with your family before I headed back into the work week of the Monday grind? I see we're going for almost five hours. Chat slowed down, so I'm going to assume my job is done. Final shouts, because I know it's behind. Going once. Going twice. Going three times a lady. But yeah, man, it's MG the future. You know what I'm about. Um, hopefully, this gives you context to bring in more information on your own journey. I'm not trying to convert nobody to no particular thing. I just want you to think further about the thing you already know. And is there a potential that someone's motherfucking capping? Because they always are.